Oh, hello there. <laughs> well, <laughs> totally planned for that. Welcome, everybody. Oh, hello. Thank you for joining us um, for this very exciting, Welcome, momentous occasion that is I'm about... Again. I'm not sure from where. Oh, I know why. That's momentous. that's my fault. Because I'm listening. I had the audio up on my, my stream. Um, oops. <laughs> Good start. Um, welcome to professionals. <laughs> um, woo! But it is so, so very lovely to have you all here joining us today. It sounds like I'm about to officiate a wedding or something. I don't know. We've <laughs> already got a hype train. <laughs> we are gathered here today to ensue chaos. Um, but you join us for the first session of many hopefully, of our Dungeons and Dragons campaign. Uh, although we did joke about it just being n, mm, because I don't really do many dungeons and there are technically no dragons in the world, but that's beside the point. Welcome, welcome to... <laughs> welcome to n. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but welcome to the Tales of the Torn Veil, vale, a new campaign brought to you by us, um, who we will introduce but momentarily. Um, it takes place in the world of um, the text adventure, which has been an accidental baby of mine. <laughs> it was an accidental conception um, quite a few years ago. Um, but this is the first uh, kind of openly out there story from the world, and we don't even know what it is yet! So that's exciting! Um, but... Speaking of uh, exciting and chaos, joining us today and hopefully in the future as well are our wonderful players. Ooh, get it? Ooh, in chat. Ooh. Um, so I guess we'll start with um, the maybe a most obvious, <laughs> the most obvious um, player. We have um, Mr. Mr. JC. Would you like to introduce yourself on your own channel? Um, <laughs> Hello, I'm JC. This is my channel. Thanks for being here. If you don't know who I am, that's a, that's awesome. Because that means you came from one of my friends here, right? Yeah. Hey yo, also, so many really friends. Thank you to Haraya and Zombie V for this up. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've changed you. Um, we also um, sh which order do we go in? I'll go in order that is in the in the chat in Discord. Um, we have as well joining us. The incredible Nye. 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 Hi, Nye. Hi, Key. <laughs> Hi, chat. Professionals. <laughs> Preparation. Uh, <laughs> chat saying Nye. Nye. That's the thing now. I'm sorry, Nye. Um, we also have the incredible magical. Uh, I just keep seeing the Discord name. Y'all are not ready for this character's name. But we do have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Mr. Dime Package. Hello, Dime. Hello. hello. And hello to one special, Eswara <laughs> Yuki. Hi, Jess. Just everybody getting all the name announcements. I'm and here everyone else, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hello. We oh, love his one. Yes, we'll say we'll say hi to everybody in chat. See what's going on, because then we'll stop talking to you, and it's nothing yeah. personal. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're... <laughs> specifically requested we not talk to chat. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. <laughs> that was the NDA, right? Oh shit, I mentioned the NDA. Um... <laughs> My anxiety won't let me. <laughs> This train must real. be halted for a moment. I must speak to you. <laughs> <laughs> halt, chat! Thine words matter not, prithee. Uh, no, they do matter very prithee. Um, and I guess on a terrible segue that makes no sense, speaking of prithee, um, the <laughs> equally fantastic and amazing Darian Audio. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'm going to start believing that, so please don't say it too much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it. Darian, it's my understanding you are a champion of ketchup, is that right? Oh. Yes, I am the one and only paladin of ketchup, so be careful out there. Okay. If you ever need tomato sauce, call me. 
<laughs> you heard it here now? first. <laughs> yeah, this is just secretly a ketchup MLM. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's why we're here, I guess. But yes, we are so, so, so excited to bring this story to you. Um, we will get started shortly when my pulse chills the fuck out. Um, but in the meantime, hi everybody! Hello chat, we got Shizu, we got Blair, we got JC, I don't uh, know who that is. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got <laughs> Zombie V, we got Nomads, Broken Angel, Broken Angel, that's that's some intense, that's an intense name, I like it. Uh, we got Re. hello Ree! We got Vivid Lee, Haraya, we got, we got, we uh, got Crystal, we got, we got Hesu, we got, we got everybody I've just said, but even more because they're so cool and so present right now, and I'm so here for it. We got Jazz, just dead ass Jazz in the chat. <laughs> just a little skibbity boo bop, ba doo bop. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes. Hello. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, um, I guess. Oh, there, <laughs> I, I said this just before we started um, streaming because I'm great with words. Jesus Christ, V, thank you so much for the biddies. So many Yo. biddies, thank you, V. Be -be 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 -be. Oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> goodness gracious. He says, hello everyone, may your dice roll in your favor. Well, and we'll find you, out, won't we? <laughs> <laughs> mine, we mine probably. <laughs> we really need that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I have I have forewarned the players that death is always an option. Um, <laughs> and, but anyway, um, that's very ominous. Speaking of which, are there any final words before we <laughs> before we begin? <laughs> any last words before we leave this realm and enter another? A thing happened, but I'm not sure what it is. Jess Bubbles followed. Thank you, Jess Bubbles. <gasps> Jess! Hello, Jess! One of my other groups of D&D &D friends. Amazing voice actress and musician. Hello. Also, I think I'm still hearing myself. A little bit. Oh, is it because... Mm. Ha la 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 la. Oh, I think it might be you, Dime. <laughs> A little bit of... It echo. is? It's coming from... It, um... uh, your your mic lights up after I say yeah, something no, loud. Ah, uh, okay. Shouldn't Ow. be popping up though. I don't hear anything on my end. Okay, do that is weird. Hmm. Oh wait, I know what it might be. Yes, no worries. No, no I worries. doubt that's what it is. But yeah, should be, be okay. Yeah, thumbs up. Fine. Thank you, chat. V sent in a hundred uh, a hundred bits and says some ketchup for Darion. Very thank you. Yes, very that's, very thank that's you. very thoughtful of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I really you do. must leave it at From the, the altar of Darian. <laughs> That's the way to win my heart, you know. You send me ketchup and I, I'll love you forever. It's big, big win. We love. All right. But unless anyone has any final, final words. Final words. You're going to kill us, aren't you? I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> it's really not the intent. I am just, I, look, I'm all worded out, which is fine because we're about to do a session of <laughs> <laughs> D &D. Oh, we're not playing Lethal Company. I thought this was. Oh, okay. Shit. No, that's fine. I can change page. Hold on. Yeah. It's I fine. mean, I, I, I. Man, I just downloaded all those mods too. Yeah. <laughs> all the all the death mods. <laughs> DM's gonna kill us death mods. Um, but yes, please feel free to join in with chat. Um, we might not be able to specifically respond to you, but we do see you. We do love you. We appreciate you. Um. And thank you for being here and supporting us right at the beginning. We, we ain't even started yet. Oh my god. Um, oh my god. Um, but yes, in the meantime, um, I guess we'll just do the intro and like do a D&D &D campaign. Does that sound good? You guys are down for that? Hooray! Woohoo! Let's go. Right. I can always get Lethal Company if we need to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, here we go. Not gonna cry. No pressure. All good. Cry. Oh, I'm Key, by the way. <laughs> like, who's this? Who's this? Uh, hi, I'm Key. I am the DM, and uh, I'm very excited. Okay, let's begin.
A world was once thought of as naught but a vessel for the life it contained, a hollow shell of potential. And yet, still, entities that roam the vast beyond, the astrals or the old gods, would see this speck, granting it light, protection, and, at its core, a warm heart, one that would truly allow it to breathe and become. Issafray, a world called home to many, one supposed to have once known great civilizations that bloomed under the astral's gaze, flourishing in life, in wonder, in love. One that some 800 years ago was ravaged by a great calamity known as the Shattering. The lands once tended and calm ripped from the face of the planet, tossed asunder to linger, untethered, unseen. Entire continents torn from the core and left to roam in the dark skies. Most life left forfeit, all history destroyed, and only a few stray souls remaining. For years they weathered the storms that haunted the few lands that remained, empty seabeds forming great desert landscapes the world over. Still and yet, some hope was found, and the astrals eventually found Issafrae's light once more. From them. From their own bodies, they plucked fibres that would see the world woven back together. Arcane fibres restoring the continents to the world you've all come to know as home. A veil holding fast in protection from other realms. Though, that knowledge is theorised, and by only but a few. No records have been harboured or survived from a time before the Calamity. However, the 800 years since have blossomed this world once more, the heart of which now consists of warmth and vast magic. A whole plethora of origins, species, creatures and magics have made Issafrae their home, surviving insurmountable odds along the way. Issafrae, a hollow shell to none and a sanctuary to all. Leaving their world to their legacies, the Astrals kept a distance from their creations, allowing its residents to thrive, cultivating great continents, the great red deserts of Asher, the cliffs and jungles of Foven, the plains of Garage, the tamed tropics of Diskai, the cosy forests of Toldren, the sheer heights of Bokfaro, the coastal formations of Zomprovni, and the varied lands of Yadash, where we begin our story. One may look at the theories posed of the Calamity with a sceptical eye, though the floating temple isles of Ashkai are undeniable proof that the shattering occurred. These bright lands lay hundreds of feet above the cerulean oceans below, a veritable panoramic view of the continent that may rival even the gods' viewpoint. Here, alabaster temples and shrines host those of spiritual affinities, peppered across the various isles and formations, attended by those who contemplate and wish greater understanding of not only the long-distant astrals, but the newer deities seem to be bleeding into the world's influence these last couple of hundred of years. Aluro, Bifon, Luto and Tarquin. You all find yourselves here for different reasons, though united by a similar cause. A ceremony deemed as old as the written histories of the planet, the Ash Sky Festival of the Hunt a celebratory few days requested by Prince Wilbur of Ashsky as part of his marriage to the Lady Morena of the Corsicals, a vast coastal city most familiar to those of you who've lived in Yadash. Though their initial ceremony is taking place there, the hunt begins a few days before their arrival in Ashsky for their second wedding, as is wont with royals. But in the meantime, welcome folks to the world of Issafray and the Tales of the Torn Veil. Wherever you may reside, take a moment, close your eyes, and come on this journey with us and live our story. Is everybody excited? We have like a, uh, like 30 like seconds to- Chill, 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 <laughs> chill. That was so good, that was so good, that was so good, that was so good. There, there's like another 40 seconds of music where we can just fangirl a bit and then we'll get going with the main thing. <laughs> So the world's all kaboom boom, and then we fixed it, or it's fixed. It's all still it, kaboom boom. It, it fixed. It fixed. No, okay. it all fixed. Um, there, there's a couple of areas of floating islands, and we're at one of them. 
to go to go and have a party for a wedding of royal people who aren't even here. <laughs> so that's cool. We love royals for that, don't we? And they're just like, have a party! Skylar. I'm gonna be over here. Thank you. This is by the amazing Ruckert who made this song for us, specifically for um, the adventures that take place in this world. Shout out to Rucker. Amazing, amazing, amazing music. And now, we begin our campaign. When the <gasps> piano... Bling. Okay. On arriving for the hunt via airships from your varying homelands, you see the tiny isle ahead of you, clustered with many more larger islands around, cramped with many adventurers seeking the same excitement or indeed glory, as well as the airships they docked on. You see event assistants line the decorated grasses and rocks, uniformed in a more formal version of the isle's standout pilgrim wear. That's a mouthful. Simple and airy light blue and charcoal outfits. And they're, the crew members are desperately trying to wrangle um, the hordes of people that are descending. <clears throat> Please, if everyone could make their way towards the registrar booths with your information and no pushing! Orderly cues, please! Ticket in hand, you will make your first steps onto this floating land and get instantly swept towards said booths with the sea of people. However, your hair catches on the whipping winds, stirred by the great airships surrounding this isle. Because of the airships, it's not the ideal place to truly see the views around you. However, what you do see are adventurers of all lands, ilks and kin. A mighty dragonborn folk wielding great axes speaking to their Goliath compatriot. A group of gnomes and halflings arguing over a cloak of seeming invisibility by the judgement of their now invisible arms, a group of otter folk speaking with some elves from foreign lands. Though none of these folk are particularly new to you, seeing such an influx of adventurers is a sight to behold, especially amidst the flags, decorations and banners put up for the festival. The smells and sounds are something truly to behold also. A waft of veritable amalgamation of foods of all cultures hovers on the air, as well as the usual smells associated with adventurers, leather, metallic armours, odd magics, and of course, sweat. Impeccable timing on the music there to really hammer home how sweaty everyone is. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> as you are swept along, thank you music, as you are swept along in this sea of adventurers, um, looking for si similar uh, experiences and glories as yourselves, um, you see one of these uh, roped off um, booths. Behind it, perching a uh, raven-esque woman, a uh, raven folk woman, who is kind of peering over her glasses at a Goliath woman that is kind of just ahead of you, taking up pretty much the entirety of the of the booth width. Um, Welcome to the festival. Now, um, are you all a part of a team? She says as she gestures to both you guys and also this um, Goliath woman ahead of you. Ah, sh shite, we need to be in teams. Uh, adventurers never read the small print. <clears throat> the festival of the hunt requires alliances of four or newer, four or more, I can't read, four or more newer adventurers partaking in the challenges. Oh, bollocks! She pushes her way past, back past you all, going back towards uh, the airships, carving her way through the queues. Ahead of you, the raven woman kind of tuts to herself, trying to straighten out her uniform. Ah, well, it uh, seems you all got the memo. Uh, welcome to Ash Sky. What are your names? Um, you see that she kind of gestures a, a massive wing towards the four of you who just so happen uh, to have been conglomerated into this booth queue in a little, in a little, uh, in a little group. So, you all look around, slightly befuddled at this uh, team that you are seemingly now a part of. Uh, Luto, 
Would you like to describe who we all see? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Ludo Bayani is like about six foot five ish, just about as big around as he is tall. He's got this plated armor on. Looks kind of uh, looks kind of exotic, maybe not uh, your typical plate armor. And uh, he's got this huge walk on his back. He probably wears as a shield. <laughs> he has a big uh, rice picker's head um, that uh, helps keep the sun out of his eyes. He's got a big smile on his face, uh, big old chubby, round, roasty cheeks, um, just decked out in gear and equipment for cooking. He's got pots and pans and a big old knife at his side. And he looks over to the rest of the group with uh, a you know, appraising eyebrows. Just, uh, I, I guess we are a group. Um, next up, we'll, we'll go in order of the stream, <laughs> the stream layout. Ayoro. Aloro. Sorry. I just see Ayoro. <laughs> Aloro. Aloro. Can we see? <laughs> Aloro is, um, a somewhat, uh, skinny around 5'5", five, five, uh, character with um, slightly feminine, slightly androgynous features. Um, they have braids and a kind of whacked up hair job <laughs> that is sort of a pixie cut. Um, they also are wearing very um, ornate leather uh, armor. And that's... A, that's a Luro, yeah. <laughs> woo woo! <laughs> oh, woo! <laughs> <laughs> we love it. Um, Aluro looks round and next to them sees Tarquin. Who, who do we see? All right, you can see another half elf, but this time he's a dark elf. So he's a mix of drow and human. He's about 5'10 tall and uh, he's got dark skin and gray kind of silvery hair, long tied up in the back. And um, he's dressed like, a, well, <laughs> like, a, how can I say, like a martial artist. You know, he doesn't wear any armor or doesn't seem to have any weapons in hand. So you can uh, get the idea that he doesn't need that. Awesome. And last but not least, we turn to Bifong. Bifon, would you like to introduce yourself? <laughs> Who do we see? Hi, Bifon. Um, <laughs> yeah, Bifon is furbo. Bit, a, a bit of a greenish purple, if that's such a color. About six foot three. Just some leathers and a uh, couple of bit of patches here and there for armor, just to protect the softer bits. Some pauldrons and such. Simple guy, sitting, looking like a smartass as usual. Perfect. So you all look at each other having been dubbed a new team for this uh, hunt, which didn't uh, didn't say on any small print that uh, that you read that there was a, a team requirement. Um, but thankfully, the hard work has been done for you uh, as you all look around at each other and uh, the Raven woman takes all your names um, as you just introduced uh, and goes, okay, well, wonderful. Well, um, Make your way to the claw hooks just over yonder, and uh, you should uh, get to the main island and claim your tents. Goodbye now, and kind of pushes you <laughs> out of the queue and along uh, further onto the island. So ahead of you, um, you see uh, a row of what can only be described as contraptions. Um, they don't look massively dissimilar to say a mounted crossbow or ballista um and as you're all pushed through you see a group that approaches these contraptions uh one of them uh slightly uh nervously pulling the trigger and with a <laughs> you just see them get catapulted by a long cable into the sky and up and land on the next island which is approximately 60 foot in the air and 20 foot away um, with a 20-foot gap between this island and that one. Um, you, you hear an audible gulp from a human adventurer just to the side of you who just pulls out a sending stone, 
Mother, you were wrong. I cannot do this. Before attempting to sneak away from their group and head back towards the ships. What would you like to do? The world is yours. What was that? We just saw a lady go go run run away? So, um, a lady ran away, but ahead of you there's um, a set of varying ballista-looking contraptions that uh, projectile uh, its <laughs> users up to the main island um, via a, a slightly um, kind of bungee cord-esque uh, contraption uh, that catapults you into the sky and up to the next island. Kind of picture uh, somewhat a skyhook from uh, Bioshock Infinite, but if it had a cable. Me. Ludo, was it? If you go next, you'll probably break that thing and they'll have to find another way for it to get us across. <laughs> yeah, I might have to take maybe two or maybe three even. Hmm. Does anybody want to do that? Are you sure it's safe? Does it look safe? No, no, not not really. You you <sighs> hear the human adventurer kind of coming back up behind you going, fine, I'll give it one go, but I swear if I die, you're paying for my funeral. And uh, she kind of goes towards the, uh, <laughs> goes towards the contraption very hesitantly and uh, pulls the trigger and you just kind of like Goofy just being projectiled in a Disney film, just... <laughs> <laughs> as she is seemingly safely catapulted up to the next island um <laughs> it, it is quite an extreme method of travel uh we haven't signed a waiver or anything have we no but it looks fun here i'll I'll go first i'll make sure it's safe oh. you do that. toddles he toddles <laughs> Thanks, over <Luda>. to it <laughs> So what is it? I sit in a thing and I press a button and I shoot off into the sky? You you just stand, you hold this mounted kind of crossbow contraction. There's a trigger that you can pull and a cable kind of is shot out and catapults you upwards. I, you I aim it myself? Press it. No, it's automatically aimed. Oh, okay. Fine. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> All right, uh, Ludo will look over the edge. What, is, what does he see? Well, below you see hundreds, if not maybe thousands of feet below you. Uh, just pure ocean. Um, it's very beautiful, very blue and rich. You can only imagine the kinds of fish and wildlife that live in there and how tasty they might be. Um, you see a couple of clouds, which is concerning because usually clouds are up um, rather than down. Uh, <laughs> floating islands are, are a new uh, a new novelty for all of you. I can't see my house from here. <laughs> uh, okay, Ludo looks over the edge and gives a big, charming smile back to his friends and says, It will be fine. We will all be fine. And he pulls the trigger. <laughs> and you feel just all of your organs kind of go the wrong direction um it's like <laughs> oh, driving God. over a hill too fast but extreme edition um i mean how much of a, a thrill seeker would you say luto <laughs> uh luto is into adventure he likes experiencing okay. new things and going to different places so it's a little so... bit it's a mixture of a screech and a wee as he goes sailing <laughs> through the air <laughs> beautiful um you kind of you're in the air for only you know only a few seconds at most it does feel kind of like a lifetime it's all slow motion as you see a bird kind of in front of you <laughs> in slow motion try to but catch you it safely <laughs> here we go roll a uh, roll an athletics check for me Ooh, i'm really not? good at athletics <laughs> oh, first go. roll of the game, and it's a 20. <laughs> we're, we're off to a good start, team. Let's go. Just slow motion. Just 
you just huh, reach a hand out. Do you just grab it? Or, or do you cup it in your hands and kind of Full on it? single palm just snatch. <laughs> <laughs> you, you reach out a palm just grabbing this bird by the body. Uh, it's a seagull and um, quite a young one. It's still got kind of some of the patches of grey on it. And as as is the way in slow motion, you just see it kind of very slowly turn its head towards you. Just... <laughs> just slow motion screech. Um, and you land safely with a seagull now added to your inventory. Congratulations. <laughs> um... Everyone can I, else. <laughs> yeah, can I can I just look around and say to the other two, like, did you just really see that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see Ludo just vanish into the sky, um, and you hear a screech. Um, you hear a screech. You can investigate the screech further if you would like to try and decipher the origin of whether it was Ludo or something else. <laughs> um, but all you know is you just saw. <laughs> That's all you know. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I don't think the body was meant for such speeds. <laughs> but there's something about the way he spoke that makes me trust him. All right, I'm next. Okay. Beefon. Good speed. <laughs> Would hey, you say uh, Beefon? Uh, thanks, Tarquin. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna need it. Hey, uh, hey, Ludo, that's your name, right? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Wanna wanna bet this guy makes it or not? Oh. Oh, I say fifty fifty. All right, let's play. I say he doesn't make it. <laughs> I guess then that means I'm on the side of he does. All right. Bifon. Good luck, Bifon. <laughs> you, you later, Bifon. Guys over there gambling on my life. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> You, no. you guys see a tabaxi kind of come over to you, kind of like a very golden uh, color, um, slightly pudgy with a little, almost kind of artful dodger suit on. It just comes up to you and goes, Hey, are you guys gambling on something, huh? I do love me a gamble. What are we gambling on? Is it a, is it illegal? Is it... Uh, we're basically trying to figure out if this guy is going to make it alive or not. Huh. Up the thing. Oh, the, oh, the, the, the claw hook thing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we Why? heard some very nasty sounds, so I don't know. Oh. Well, that doesn't sound good. Uh, tell you what, if you give me, uh, if you give me five gold, I'll go up there and tell you if your friend's alive or not. Kind of. Um, that sounds <laughs> Fra expensive. Frowny yeah. smiles his mouth and looks to you. All right, all right, all right, you're, you're twisting my arm, I'll do it for two. Two gold. That's a fair deal, wouldn't you say? I uh, see. I'm gambling my life to go up there and help you guys out. I think uh, I'll pass. Yeah. All right, you it's all just lost. a friendly bet between the two of us because we know each other for the entirety of our lives. But thank you. Oh, yes, yes, Don't we've worry. known each other forever. Me and Tarquin, yeah. of course. Oh yeah, no worries, no worries at all. Um. Aloro, <laughs> um, you see Deadass, uh, this tabaxi man, reaching into your bag of tricks. Um, and uh, he's trying to Ooh. be really stealthy about it, but you wouldn't notice unless you just heard him retract his hand and go, Ow, what the heck is in there? Is that just meat in there? Mind your own business, sir. <laughs> and they just rip their bag back into their in their hands okay okay i'll 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 be going um beef on you see this tabaxi man come over to you like sheesh those uh those guys aren't very nice are they <laughs> uh once you get to know them they're fine known them all my life actually that's why they're gambling on mine Oh, you don't say, you don't say. Well, are we gonna die, or like, well, what's the deal with this thing? I'm not sure. I don't know about you. I don't plan on dying. Me neither, my friend, me neither. You see, I'm of a feline origin, so I have a lot of lives, except I kind of used six or so of them up on ex-wives of varying capacities. You know how it is. But, uh, 
Let's say we do this together, huh? Sure thing. Okay, he goes to the contraption next to you. On a one. On a two. And he immediately clicks his on two and... <laughs> what happened um. to three? <laughs> Alright, you pressing the trigger? <laughs> oh, I thought he, he was just... pulling for both of us. Oh no, <laughs> no, he just went without you. Well, I'm just right behind him. Alright. Sailing through the air. <laughs> Greatest of ease. You sail through the air. It feels as you feel the wind blow through your Firbolg tufts. Uh, it feels like time slows for a second. You can picture in your mind a seagull in slow motion flying past, except there's not one there. It's just in your mind. Uh, and you manage to <laughs> get up onto the main island and land safely. Once again, Aluro and Tarquin, you see the next ally vanish onto the isle above you. No sound this time. Maybe unless there's a wee or a, a successful cry. <laughs> Expletives. <laughs> so. Well, Tarquin, it looks like it's just us. Yeah, I mean, I didn't hear anything, so I guess they're fine or dead. <laughs> dead people don't make sounds, right? That is very true. Um, you know, I'd just... feel a lot better if we did it together. All right, just follow my lead. I'll show you how it's done. And I have no idea how to do it, but let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the, for the fun of it, Tarquin, roll roll for me just a general intelligence. Intelligence, <laughs> general intelligence oh, you're roll. killing me. <laughs> <laughs> if it's any, if it's any. Oh uh, my god, nineteen! I'm fun the times. smartest in the world. Nineteen. <laughs> Plus Hell zero yes. because I don't have oh. intelligence. <laughs> Wait, you got his... Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you... This is basically like a crossbow, but you can see where instead of a bolt, there's a, a claw hook on the end of it. Kind of um, probably why it's called a claw hook. Um, and you see that there is uh, kind of woven into the contraption kind of a thick um, wrapped wire cable um, that seems pretty sturdy. Um, it, it doesn't seem as though uh, there's any imminent risk of death despite what the music would have you believe <laughs> as it changes um, <laughs> um yeah it is it is just a souped up crossbow for purposes of transportation um it is made out of some oak wood uh some fine hardened steel uh and uh you're like the smartest guy here obviously. all right i have good news <laughs> i have meticulously inspected this fine equipment and I understood that people aren't dying from it. So, we can get across the island and there's not gonna be cannibals eating corpses of people flying and splashing on the ground. So we're perfectly safe. Well, that's a new scenario that I didn't think about before that now I can worry about. But hey, uh, it'll be fine. Yes, I, I believe you and I believe... Whew. Ah. Yeah, okay. Um, let's, let's do this. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> One thing, uh, Key, I would yes. very much like to do an acrobatics check while flying so I can do something fun and kind of <laughs> boast. And... I will absolutely allow this. I'm here to enable All it. right. <laughs> <laughs> Might not be a good idea, but I'm here to enable. <laughs> no, it will be fine. Um, It'll be fine, I'll just land on my face or something. You've investigated the contraption thoroughly, and you are the smartest guy here. You know it is definitely safe, especially for doing flips. Um, yeah. So yes, you both pull the pull the triggers of the contraptions. Um, roll, roll an acrobatics check, Tarquin. Let's go. I'll say an advantage, because you rolled high on the on the intelligence. You can figure out the, the G-force <laughs> going on. <laughs> 19. Nice! Okay. What what acrobatics do you do? Mm, a couple of spins in the air and then graciously land in front of everyone on the other side. 
<laughs> Amazing. Beef on and Luto, you see Tarquin do the most elegant of pirouettes through the air as he lands before you, like a professional acrobat would. Um, Aloro, what do what do we see? What do we see with Aloro? <laughs> what do we hear with Aloro? <laughs> Are there any screams? <laughs> 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 In, in unison, you see both of these sides happen. <laughs> um, but you all make it up onto the main island safely. Uh, around you, you get a much better view of the horizons now that airships don't block your entire periphery. Uh, you see blue skies topped with whipped clouds and a dash of afternoon pink where it kisses the ocean, which you can see for miles. Dotted around your viewpoint are varying other isles, some inhabited, some not, some foresty. And as you look um, back at the contraptions that lead back down, you feel a slight cold sensation um, and see that the bottom that a bottomless waterfall flows out just to the <laughs> just to the right of you where my dice box is, and I just nailed my elbow. Uh, <laughs> but you see um, a bottomless waterfall falling down into the uh, abyss below. You've all made it and find yourselves part of a new, totally unplanned and random team. Huzzah! Um, and that is where we find ourselves. So, uh, as you arrive, you see a few more of these crewmates for the events leading everyone towards um, a very wide area, kind of short, trimmed grass, uh, a few wildflowers dotted about, and you see a whole amalgamation of tents from all different lands. You see some deserty themed tents, you see some that are very typical hunters with their trophies set apart about them. You see ones that have little water features going on mini shrines for their various deities. Um, and kind of just hidden un just under one of the cliffs of a parallel island that overhangs this one. You see a variety of tents of foods and more foods <laughs> and various different shops and repair stations. Um, and then right towards the north of where you're currently standing, you see a much larger tent that seems to be one of the official kind of uh, meeting points uh, for the events. And various flags and banners waving and whipping about in the breeze, um, heralding many, many different lands, uh, both familiar and not. But you uh, see adventurers slowly making their way to different tents, setting their own up, finding some that are empty. Probably a bit of tent theft going on as well, um, as is want with any strange music festival vibe uh, area. But yes, what would you all like to do? Um, there is a crew member just ahead that's kind of smiling at you as a as a Walmart greeter or some such would kind of smiling, but not actually saying anything to you yet, but very much building up to that uh, should you get any closer. But you will survive the claw hooks, and the day is yours. Well, what would you guys like to get up to? Treasure hunting, monster slaying. Well, Bifon, by the way. Oh, Bifon. Nice to meet you all. <laughs> Bifon. Nice to meet you. I'm Ludo. Ludo hey, smiles. <laughs> Ludo smiles over at the other two expectantly. Um, I'm Aluro. Hi. Hello. You may call me Tarquin, unless you already know me. Do you know me? Do you know who I am? Um, Do we know you? I, uh, everyone I know knows who they're... Tarquin is. You know what? Everyone roll uh, history at disadvantage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. It's probably a good Ooh, sign as well. My first roll for the campaign was a natural one. So uh, you do not know who Tarquin is. That's 10 for me. You do not know who Tarquin is. <laughs> I, I rolled a one. I don't know who Tarquin is. <laughs> 
hello? Oh my god. I ro rolled an eight. Uh, surprisingly, you also do not know who Tarquin is. <laughs> I cannot believe these people. <laughs> I know you did a really good flip off of the hooks. That's pretty nice. Bravo. Well, thank you. Next time I will charge people to watch that. Oh, I, I don't have very much money. You are a, a cook. Something like that. You have a lot of utensils over there. I do. I also have a bird. Maybe we can eat it. And then he's petting the <laughs> seagull. <laughs> Roll. <laughs> oh no, I forgot. Um... Roll an animal handling check for me, Ludo. Okay. <laughs> Straight ten. Seagull. Okay. Oh, this is a very smart seagull. Uh, it's trying to flap really hard. Um, and it's really trying to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I? Is there anything I can like? Cast like can I use ceremony to make him? Oh, ceremony takes an hour to cast. Jeez. Um, <laughs> can I bless the the bird? No. Um, okay, I'm I just mean, doing my best to calm the bird. It, that's all good. It's not going anywhere because it's not strong enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> it just knows it wants out. Um, and again, team, you all you all see Ludo just trying to. Just looking at the seagull, wondering why it's trying to escape so bad. Um, whatever you all make of that. I understood what you said. <laughs> Do you need a hand with that bird or something? Oh, no. I think he's just a little, you know, uh, maybe scared because he's getting to know me. But I'm sure we will be friends very soon. And I put his face close to mine. And I press my forehead to his little bird forehead. Oh, roll, roll another animal handling at, at advantage. That's adorable. Okay. Is he uh, by chance? And, uh, is he by chance fat and looking delicious and full of meat? I'm. I mean, seagulls have definitely got a slightly uh, prominent chest area, um, so you can imagine the breast meat's probably kind of good. All right, I got a dirty 20. Um, it, it, surprisingly, <laughs> against the odds, uh, the seagull definitely begins to stop screeching uh, and calms down and kind of nestles into your large hands, finding finding some comfort, just okay. nestling there, uh, unaware of its potential fate. <laughs> Thank you for calming down. Maybe I won't eat you. Probably I will eat you. The seagull is a seagull. It does not understand the spoken word. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh -huh. I was going to say I came here for the hunt. Are you also all here for the hunt? I was originally here for job seeking, but I think this sounds like a lot of fun and I just can't help myself. <laughs> it's cool, but kind of nerve-wracking getting put together with a bunch of people you don't know, you know? You all seem yeah, nice. should be okay. Yeah. We all survived the catapult. That's uh, true. You all see uh, the uh, event crew member just ahead of you, very much kind of not having gotten any closer, but definitely very intently leaning in, just kind of smiling at you like, why haven't they come over yet? I have so much to tell them. <laughs> Um, also slightly confused about the seagull, but... I feel like this guy wants to talk to us. Hello, sir, madam, ma'am, person. Um, how you uh, do today? Ma'am is quite all right. Um, welcome to Ash Sky for the hunt of the fest, the festival of the hunt. God damn it. Man. One job, Christy, one job! <sighs> <clears throat> Sorry, please ignore that. But all right. Welcome to the Festival of the Hunt. Uh, the wonderful Isles of Ash Sky are so humbled and honored to have you here. Are you all a team? 
We are now. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Is that, can I ask, is that an emotional support bird? It is very emotional and I am supporting it. Okay, sounds great. So is this your first time in Ash Sky? It oh, would be yes. one of your first times in Ash Sky. <laughs> first well, time for me. Well, we have so much to show you. We have this main aisle, which has all of our tent and accommodations and mostly tents uh, for the actual festival itself. We also have further to the north and up some of the um, rocky plateaus. <laughs> we have uh, some of the rest of the town. And of course you cannot miss dotted about both on this aisle and some of the others, a variety of shrines if you are more into the spirituality of the world. Um, will any of you be taking an interest in the shrines and temples? Oh, uh, me, me. Wonderful. Maybe don't talk to the pilgrims. Uh, they are, what's the word? Um, very unpeaceful about uh, there being so many hunters on their uh, aisles. Not that it's sacred land or anything, but they, you know, you know they kind of treat it like it is. So just, just you know, err on the side of caution. Be very respectful. Um, don't, if you don't have to go, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's my advice, but yeah, it's a wonderful island and everyone is so friendly. Um, I don't think any of you need to roll an insight check to know that she's, she's trying the hard sell as best as she can, but she's obviously had a slightly negative run in with, um, one of the pilgrims, uh, of the isles. Uh, but there will be a presentation, hopefully in a couple of hours, that will introduce you to the workings of the festival. And uh, at that point, you can get your tents, get cozy, have a wonderful sleep, enjoy the entertainments. There's a whole bunch of bards over there being incredibly loud. And then, you know, we can get some good shut-eye for the morning, get some good breakfast, and then get on with the hunt. She kind of does a little fist pump in the air. But I will be here for any questions if you need, as will all of the other event crew members. That's the spirit. Yeah! That's the spirit! Wonderful. Great. She just kind so of... what exactly are we hunting? Well, that'll possibly be part of the uh, announcements later on. Um, I don't know to tell you the truth. Uh, there might be some people around that have some secrets, but, uh, <laughs> that's not, you didn't hear that from me, you know what I mean? <laughs> she kind of <laughs> gently elbows Alora. <laughs> just, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Just, yeah. Um, god, you guys are great. I love hunters. So, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask, but otherwise, help yourselves to the... Uh, amenities of the islands. We have Benoit's, if you're familiar with Ospra. If you've been to Ospra, you'll know that Benoit has a wonderful bakery there. Um, and he's brought some of his supplies here for feastings, if you fancy any of that. There are a few different kitchens with food, because, you know, kitchens have food in them. Uh, they didn't prepare us for this. <laughs> They didn't prepare us for this, but I'm doing my best. Uh, this was always my job to be a to be a tour guide. Um, anyway, I'm having a crisis. Uh, please go and enjoy your day. Uh, have a chat with some of the other adventurers here. And yeah, just bear in mind the thing about the pilgrims. that They'll be fine, but yeah. Oh, just one more thing, if you don't mind. Of course. Where are the bathrooms, and is this their land? Is this the land of the bathrooms? The the pilgrims. Oh, well, it's not specifically their land. A lot of the pilgrims go on their pilgrimages and then end up here. Um, they're just... There are a lot of adventurers. Uh, we slightly... Uh, oversubscribed uh, to what we thought would uh, be the outcome. Uh, surprisingly, more people would rather 
kill monsters than uh, go to a royal wedding. Which I wish I was in that boat because I'm in the right place for that. Um, but there are some bathroom tents should you need. Um, yeah, they're they're the uh, blue ones that are dotted around. I'm not sure if there will be enough. If I'm being honest with you. But prestidigitation is a wonderful spell that helps clean up any and all messes. She I'll she kind of <laughs> her eyebrows kind of cross a little as as she tries to maintain her smile. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, don't let me keep you with uh, my speech, which I ran out of about five minutes ago. Um, enjoy the islands and. Good luck with the hunt. Yeah. Thank you. She Let's enjoy of... the island before she has a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> before we uh, trundle off, Ludo puts a big hand on Christy's shoulder and smiles down there with a big full face smile and says, You were very helpful today. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. If you could tell my manager, that would be... Amazing, but you don't have to. But if you see him, <laughs> uh, then you could. Who is your manager? Uh, his name is Bavel. Uh, he's a kind of like a a, a goldenish dragonborn guy. Uh, he's got like a little suit on. It looks kind of very out of place. Um, he's probably got a clipboard. If, if, if you see him, he's probably got a clipboard. If we see him, I will tell him. Thank you ever so much. Enjoy the... F good luck with the festival. She just kind of holds her pose, just waiting <laughs> to exhale. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Ailura, Ailura. Wanna Tark bet if she survives? <laughs> Hmm. I bet she does. Ah. All right. Let's see if by the end of this she's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> are you walking away as you say this, or are you just staying there and? <laughs> I'm kind of saying it to, to her, but if she, if the poor lady overhears it, then that's fine. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll roll for it. Uh, yeah, she hears it. Um, I'm I'm not partaking. What is there? Should I know something? Um, and just kind of hurries off in a in a slight panic. Um, off towards one of the uh, one of the staff tents. But yes, you see varying adventures roaming around. Um, is there anything in particular anyone would like to do, or do you just want to scan? what's going on and see what to get up to. Uh, well, I think we have a good place to start. We should take a Loro over to see whatever deity it is you want to see. That way we could look around as we go over there. Yes. Yeah. Sounds like a Sounds plan. good. Keep so... an eye out on the way there for a place for us all to stay and to eat and to sleep. I don't oh, have definitely. anywhere here. Awesome. So definitely looking for a place to sleep. Uh, you're not cooking, Ludo? Well, if they let me, but most of the time they do not let me use their kitchen. I we'll can make a bonfire. Ah. Uh -huh. I'll see about procuring some pots and pans. We have the protein. <laughs> <laughs> So we all look at Tarquin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just thinking that we need some crushed tomatoes, vinegar, brown sugar, salt, and stuff like that. Tarquin, are you also a chef? No, but I love my tomatoes, so <laughs> Okay. Plenty of tomatoes for Tarquin. Tomato Tarquin! Tar Tarquin Nate to to the mark the Marquin. Tomato. Uh, keep trying, big guy. Okay. This continues as you uh, <laughs> make your way, kind of walking through um, the areas. So if you all roll a perception check for me, uh, we'll say Alora is looking for a temple 
uh, beef on, looking for uh, some tents, perhaps. Um, Muto for any kitchens that will maybe let him <laughs> cook. Uh, let him cook. I think l mm. after traveling for a while, Ludo might be looking for uh, a decent, like, up not upscale, but a better inn that might have more accommodations for bigger people who require bigger beds. Mm. Okie dokie. Valid. Let's see um, what we got. Yeah. So oh, overall, no. overall perception for me. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Chat's going nuts <laughs> about the bird. <laughs> <laughs> you must know by now, the more you want me to not eat the bird. You must know. There's, I've been doing this for years. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so we've got a seven and a nine from Luto and Aloro. What's everybody else getting oh, on? Perception, perception. Fifteen, nice. Oh, I got a three. Six in total. <laughs> awesome. I got uh, a nine. <laughs> so as a majority party role, that is that is not a fail. Uh, but it's not a astounding success either, necessarily. Um, we can work with that. Uh, so as you make your way uh, through, you do see a vast majority of the tents uh, have all been taken up. Um, you see gaggles of adventurers all kind of getting comfy, some just going full into nap, some of them sh ominously sharpening their weapons as they stare you down. As you walk past, uh, you see groups of bards all conglomerating and having theatre kid moments. Um, and you do see, again, various uh, kind of food tents as you go along. You see one that seems to be a completely empty kitchen, Luto, um, just within this within this tent. Just oh. kind of um, like a workstation. There's kind of like a spoon on the side. Um, loads of ingredients and everything um, on one of the um, side counters of it. Uh, Loro, you see quite a few shrines and temples. Um, they are dotted about all in varying conditions and sizes. Um... As you make your way kind of uh, out of the tent portion of um, the area, you do see a little little map uh, on the um, kind of a billboard map like you see at nature reserves. Um, it doesn't pinpoint any of the event specific places or any other specific places other than just the shrines and the temples. Um, you see that there are a number of shrines. Uh, you see, uh, one called the Temple of Elementals. You see one called the Temple of Searching. The Temple of Fondness. The Shrine of Fortune. The Shrine of Peace. And the Shrine of Heart. And I will also eat those in our... Um, Discord chat so you, you can see them all because <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> there we go. So, if any of those take your interest, um, we can find their location. Uh, Beefon, you got a 15. Uh, was there anything specifically Beefon was looking for? What Ludo said, something a little bit larger. Okay. Maybe even more um, comfy. Hell yeah. So, you recall what Christy, the poor nervous wreck, um, was speaking of earlier. Uh, that just ahead, kind of up some of the rocky plateaus, is more of the regular town of uh, Ash Sky. Uh, which hopefully should be sans too many other adventurers. Um, and all towns have, a, have an inn of some sort, right? Uh, so your best bet is um, making your way past all of the tents and the kind of festival grounds and making your way up and into town, which you can relate to the party should you wish. Yeah, are we all splitting up or are we going together anywhere? I guess we should all go to the temple first and then set up lodging and whatnot afterwards. All right. Wonderful. Sounds good. Let's go. So, which temple would you like to go to, Alora? The Temple of Searching. Okay. So you see that that uh, temple is 
uh, just kind of um, almost on the way to town from where you are, kind of at the northern end of the festival grounds. And then it seemingly goes down kind of a slightly spiraled path of um, conjoined smaller islands um, down to one of the uh, kind of alabaster domed temples. Um, you all make your way there for the sake of brevity. Uh, it doesn't take long and it's not a particularly arduous journey. Uh, it takes, you know, five, six minutes uh, most. Um, and you make your way there and you do see a very simple but very um, uh, relaxed atmosphere uh, of this temple. This kind of very almost marble-esque sheen um, to this uh, building. It's almost as if you mixed kind of a, a slightly translucent, just slightly translucent chalk with the patterns of marble. Um, really beautiful, beautiful building. And uh, as you make your way towards there, you see um, a uh, <laughs> you see a, a human man, kind of darker skin, uh, long blue hair, kind of uh, braided and tied in a ponytail uh, going all the way down his back and wearing those traditional um, kind of jodhpurs and uh, relaxed uh, loose clothings. Uh, he's kind of standing at the entrance looking slightly fraught um, but as he sees uh, you all coming along goes ah oh welcome oh someone's actually visiting <laughs> um hello uh it, uh welcome and gives you a kind of uh regains his composure and gives you a small bow uh, my name is tefima and i am the uh main pilgrim here at the shrine of searching uh how may how may i help you today um and no this isn't the bathroom so if you're looking for the bathroom you want to go kind of back up the hill and then uh back to the festival we're not round. looking for a bathroom we're, we're... oh wonderful. <laughs> we're 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 supposed to be, I think. Ah, Thank you. Perfect. You're the first today. A lot of people really don't know what blue tent means. <laughs> um, but it's ever so wonderful to meet you. Uh, may I ask your names? Allura. Lovely Evon. to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Arquin. Lovely to meet you. I'm Ludo. Lovely. Is that a seagull? It is. Pet, Wonderful. pet, pet. <laughs> um, kind of double takes and moves past it. Uh, so, what brings you to the Shrine of Searching today? Um, well, I have been searching for purpose. Well, you've... <laughs> You've come to the right place. Uh, please, come on in. Um, and he gestures to you all to enter the uh, the dome-shaped building. It's the, the temples definitely seem a... They're not quite gazebo, but they're not quite building. They're a strange mix of in-between where you're never truly kind of inside or outside when you're in these temples. Um, but you see very kind of quaint, plain um, stone walls similar to the outside on um, the inside. A bunch of plants and mini shrines to different deities um, patted about. Um, and some shrines that just seem kind of open to whatever gods are out there. <laughs> um, so roll for me a religion check, Aloro, please. Festival of the Hunt. More like here to pray. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is... Oh, no. I got music. a four. Awesome. <laughs> um, there's a whole bunch of mini shrines and, and, and incenses. It smells cool. Hell yeah. Um, Tefima kind of uh, looks to you kind of as you glance around at all these uh, religious iconographies. Mostly completely lost. <laughs> um, and... Uh, so when when you say you're looking for your purpose, tell me more about that. 
Well, um, there are things in life that uh, shifted rather drastically uh, recently, and I feel a calling, but I can't seem to narrow down exactly what that is. And I don't know if I'm supposed to be looking for a new job or if maybe something more in line with heroism is in order. I see. Um, come with me over here quickly. Uh, you you may all join as well. This can be a group activity if, if you want. We, we, we have fun at these uh, temples, despite what people would have you believe. Uh, no, please do come over here. And he leads you to a kind of very small, almost knee-high table. Um, and you see a variety of strange, colourful stones uh, on this table. Um, and he kind of hands you a small pouch of them, maybe five or six of them, and says, Tell me, uh, answer these questions for me, if you will. Um, again, you can all also join. It, it can. You don't have to have the stones for it. Um... Do you feel resonance with the skies or the seas? The seas. Okay. Uh, please cast the stones uh, onto the table. And you do. Ambient. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> okay. I'm seeing... And he kind of looks at this scattered array of seemingly completely random uh, stones on the table. Anyone who wants to can roll a religion check if they're interested. Um, I'm seeing definitely a lot of conflict in in, in your life. Um, which you've, you've told me. I'm not going to pretend that's something I foresaw in the, in the stones. Ah. I'm seeing that you have tasted purpose but are still searching for something more, correct? Yes, that's exactly it. Wonderful. Uh, he, <laughs> he kind of looks at the stones in his hand. Make an insight check for me. Just for fun. <laughs> Who? Two? Um... <laughs> He, uh... No, 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 oh, not to. Sorry. Who? Oh, me? You, Inside you, check? Sorry. Yes, sorry. Okay, yes. <laughs> I was like, oh no, not a two. <laughs> Just by, I, now it's going to be a cursed roll. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is blessed. <laughs> oh, it is blessed. <gasps> 16. Oh, amazing. Not bad. He looks very concerned. Um, not because the stones are predicting something bad. But because he, he seemingly doesn't know what to make of them. Um, and doesn't know how to break the news to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hmm. So. Purpose. Yes, purpose. Um, what are all... What, inspire me. What are uh, all of your acquaintances' uh, purposes here? What What goals do you all seek? Maybe that will inspire the stones to... Uh, a point of clarity. Well, I want to cook everything. Oh, a, a noble, noble goal in, like, everything, everything? Like, and he kind of looks at the seagull. <laughs> well, everything you're supposed to eat. My mentor told me if they wear clothes, we do not eat those. Okay. Well, um, that is an, indeed a very strong, inspiring purpose. Um, how about y you, friend, and looks to Bifon? I'm just looking to get back into adventuring. Hmm. There is no shame in a, in a, not subtle goal, but a more open goal. Um purpose yes and yourself sir looking to tarquin me you don't know who i am 
I'm gonna roll real quick. <laughs> uh, he with a five. <laughs> it doesn't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hang on, it would be a disadvantage. Okay, um, yeah, uh, I'm, I am, uh, am I meant to know who you are? Of course you are, but don't worry, you will remember Targwin's name soon enough. Okay, um, Mark, Mark, Mark was it? Mark, when, uh, anyway, what is, what is your purpose in life? Well, my purpose is to pursue glory, of course. What everyone should do. Hmm. Well, there, there you have it. Maybe you, maybe, maybe uh, Tarquin is right, Alora. Maybe you, you should pursue glory. I will be frank. Um, the stones haven't particularly shown me what I usually see. Um, but that is not a bad sign, per se. Maybe... It is more a case of you finding yourself, and then within you can find your inner purpose. I see. I tell you what, come back tomorrow. Uh, I will give you a blessing. I will give you all a, a short blessing for today. And um, come back tomorrow. And I will cleanse the stones thoroughly. Maybe, maybe it's the stones. I don't think. I don't think it's you. You seem very lovely and and like you have a purpose in this world. Yes, come back um. tomorrow. <laughs> uh, he kind of rushes over to a desk at the side of the room, kind of opens a drawer in the cabinet, and pulls out. Um, kind of rummages through for a bit and pulls out uh, a stick of incense and lights it kind of uh, just to the side and brings it over, kind of cupping the end in his hand and wafts, wafts it around you all. Um, and for the next, until the next long rest, you will get advantage for any perception checks. Ayo. Oh, nice. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and it smells nice too. Uh <laughs> <laughs> It smells. What does it smell like? It smells a bit patchouli-ish, a little bit, a little bit fragrant, a little bit sandalwoody. Um, uh, you will notice how how quite lovely it smells, and you feel rejuvenated, alert, but awake, um, as if your purpose could potentially become clearer to you now, via the means of mechanical p uh, advantage to perception. Um, yes. So I will get on to cleansing these stones. Uh, and yes, do come back tomorrow, though. Okay. All right. We will. We will find. He kind of, if you allow him, takes your, takes one of your hands in his too. We will find your purpose. You do have a purpose. Trust. Yeah. He kind of releases, <laughs> ironically releases your hand as if it is a bird. He's letting into the sky. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and um, bids you all bids you all uh, good day, and we shall see you see you soon. But go enjoy the festival, and do visit tomorrow. Um, yes. Thanks, pops. Chaplain, chief, is it? Uh, uh, Tefima is fine. It's it's my Tifima. name. Okay. Yes. Yes. Thank or you. Tim Tim for short, if you really, really must, but I would prefer to Fibber. But yes, peace peace unto all of you. Let let them shine upon you with radiance and blessings, all of that good stuff. Perfect. Yes. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> Bye <right>. Tim. <laughs> On your way to town, see what see what accommodations there are. Yes. Yes. Yo. Okie dokie. Let me put a different song on. Right. When are they making the announcement? Did they say when they were going to make the announcement for the hunt? Um, they didn't, but huh. uh, it they'll they'll make it apparent. <laughs> I mean, presumably, it's an you announcement, imagine. right? So presumably, it's loud. D yeah, they'll just do it in a, in a corner, mm. really quietly, so only two <laughs> people can hear. Um, yes, they'll they'll make sure that everyone can hear. Um, but you all head up into the town. 
Um, very simple buildings, uh, not dissimilar to the domed shrines and temples uh, in terms of material, uh, but with kind of wooden faces, uh, slightly wind and rain battered. Um, and quite quickly, you come upon one of the larger buildings um, in the area, which is a inn and tavern by the name of I have a thousand notes <laughs> and I am stalling for time this one looks see. good it's called I have a thousand notes <laughs> <laughs> fight you um, it is called the sun's sight in and tavern uh, with a lovely little wooden hanging sign that has a sun uh, on it very quaint looking um, from from outside, you do see a kind of uh, a few people um, queuing, seemingly outside. Less so queuing and more so loitering. Um, but the place seems to be pretty bumping. Um, so you can all head in, should you so wish. Okay, I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah. Oh, sorry. No. Oh, I was gonna say I'll walk up to one of the groups of people in the front. And just kind of stand there smiling till somebody acknowledges me. <laughs> <laughs> you're <laughs> uh, you're the standing there while you see uh, the dragonborn uh, with the the great axes and the Goliath woman from earlier. Um, very briefly saw them on your way, uh, kind of in, and you see the Goliath woman eventually looks at, kind of sees you looking and goes think he's looking at us and the dragonborn just goes oh yes he certainly he certainly is isn't he yeah well uh, mm, uh i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna go and you see the <laughs> the dragonborn <laughs> man just kind of put his put um something in the hand of the goliath woman and just leave and she just go kind of rolls her eyes and goes Yes, how can I help you? Yes, I'm single, but uh, I'm a little bit drunk right now. Okay, good. Uh, I was wondering, you're standing here, is this place any good? Yeah, I mean, it's got ale. That's what matters, right? I yes. So <laughs> yes, my friends want to get very drunk, but also, how is the food here? Uh, does ale count as food? Yes. I, yeah. It's, it's pretty good. I'm, I've got to say, it's pretty good. Okay, neat. What did that guy give you? Well, I don't think that's any of your business, I'm afraid. Oh, okay. See you inside. Oh, good luck. Um... <laughs> She kind of just goes back to leaning on the side of the wall. Udo, I can't tell if you are incredibly friendly or incredibly nefarious. <laughs> I'm very friendly. How could you say that before? Uh, just wondering if you want to eat all of us. No, you wear clothes. If they this wear clothes, true, you do not eat those. I'll be sure to keep my clothes on around you. You know who doesn't wear clothes? And I'll pat the bird <laughs> on the head. Yeah. <laughs> we should find that bird a hat. <laughs> Already on it. <laughs> the the loophole. <laughs> okay, amazing. Um... <laughs> Fucking seagull, I swear to God. Um, right, so you all do you all go into the sun site? Yes. Wonderful. So opening the door, um, you immediately like feel it hit the back of someone. Uh it it appears that there's been some kind of scrum uh that has occurred. Something's gone down here. Um there's like a mess all over the floor. There's like Four people behind the bars, just underneath each of the taps, just helping themselves. Um, uh, a lot of people are, are kind of uh, just drunkenly 
laying about, kind of tipping over tables and uh, having a good chaotic time. Speaking of a good old chaotic time, let me uh, let me put a different song on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> chaos Gentle and mischief. Piano music. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, just kind of at the bar, at one side of it, you see um, what can only be described as a slightly lumberjackish man, kind of very uh, big beard, um, quite swole, um, Dorito body. <laughs> Not literally. Uh, and uh, you see to the uh, side of him uh, a cat on the um, on the bar top, kind of. That he seems to be talking to in some shape or form. Um, and then just a, a gaggle of adventurers being drunk hunters, living up to the stereotypes, living up to the names. Yes. Um, as you as you come in, uh, you see, you hear a little ding ling ling of the bell going, and uh, see the um, see the uh, barman who's having an existential crisis. Who isn't? It's a day for existential crises. Uh, <laughs> you see him kind of look up, kind of from leaning on his, his hand and goes, Pretty much all the alcohol is gone, uh, but if you can get these bastards at the taps gone, you can probably find whatever's left. If you can pay for it, that'd be great. If not, I guess that doesn't matter. Are you being robbed? I wouldn't say robbed, especially. Uh, it's more just chaotic. See, uh, these strange fellows came in like a satyr, like an elf and like a half drow or something. They came in and they just... Everyone in the bar saw them just coming around to try and help out behind the bar. But everyone took that as, as it was a free-for-all. So, that is the scene that you see before you, my friend. Um, the cat suddenly kind of looks up to all of you. Oh yes, it was quite a, um, quite a faff, quite a hassle. It was quite bad. I don't know if I'll ever recover. And my fur is so soaked with ale. That's a little, it's a little cat. It's like not a cat person, but a little cat. It's a, it's a fairly large cat, but it is a regular cat. Okay. Um, just kind of a dark tabby cat, uh, just chilling on the counter next to this guy and uh, talking. Be fun, the cat is talking. <laughs> Everybody here uh, drinking? Aye. Uh... How many drinks do I need to get? I'll take one. You'll take one? Me, please. Oh. Well, like Hello, I said, would you like one? Good luck. Aye. Okay. I would like to do two athletics <gasps> checks. Oh. One to snake and slither through everyone, four mugs in hand, and fill them up. And another one to grab a towel on the way back and wipe down the cat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no roll needed for wiping down the cat. Um,. We can use that uh, second athletics roll to uh, see if you can get to the taps because there are uh, currently a whole gaggle. There's like a couple of um, dwarves that are kind of piggy packing each other. So one of them can literally put his head under the tap to just pour <laughs> ale directly into his mouth. Um, and there's a similar scene from the other four taps of various adventurers doing the same. I'll just sort of slide him aside a little bit and catch it and then put him back. <laughs> roll roll for ath for an athletics check at advantage because you okay. know if it, it's a stack of no it's a stack of dwarves. So if you if you get one dwarf, the other one's going with him, you know. <laughs> so 17 plus 4 then. 17 plus 4 <laughs> certainly manages. Um how do you how do you move the the dwarves out of the way? Just sort of, of topple them, palm just... him in the face, and just slide his head down the bar a little bit. Just fill it up. <laughs> oh, oh, fill up another, <laughs> and another, and another, and then I just put my hand on the other side of his head and slide it right back and throw that tap back on. Oh, oh, oh! Mm. Thank you. 
He goes back to just drinking out of the tap. And um, I just slinky my way out of there with all the mugs in hand, grab a towel on the way back and throw it over the cat. Yes, and you easily succeed in that. Um, the cat kind of lands over over the cat's head. Oh, oh is that, is that, thank you. Uh, did the lights go out? Oh, and kind of, you see it trying to, you all see it just trying to, like a cat with a towel on its head, trying to get the towel off its head. That's why I wanted to rub it down to make sure it's all nice and dry. I give everybody their drinks first. Yeah, I come back and come back. Oh, finish oh. with the cat. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, that feels, oh, that feels, could you just, like, a little... Right behind little, the ear, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Oh, 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 that feels so good. Oh, Shammy it a bit, you know, good. hold on to the towel and the cat. I won't squeeze too hard, just, you know, make sure I soak everything in. Oh, oh thank, thank you. You just kind of finish cleaning him, and because of the nature of ale, you do manage to get uh, the cat dry, but the fur is slightly standing on end um, from the stickiness of the of the ale, but it's significantly better condition than uh, they were in before. Um, oh, oh, th thank you, thank you, dear friend. Um, the, the bartender just kind of looks at you and goes, I mean, you could have stopped them. They're still robbing from me, but, you know, I, uh, I appreciate your uh, consideration for the hunters here. So, I take it y'all are here for the festival then. We oh. are. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Uh, by the way, that'll be... Uh, let's see here. That'll be eight copper coins, please, for those four drinks. How much is it if we handle your robber problem? <sighs> Roll a persuasion check for me, please. <laughs> oh, I'm very not good at this. <laughs> Anyone else can help uh, with with some role playing action uh, that might be able to give him an advantage on his persuasion check. If anyone would say like, sweet. What what do you say to the bartender to persuade him? Well, that would be thirteen on my roll, and pretty much. Um... <laughs> Ludo had the same exact idea that I did. <laughs> so, if we take care of your problem, um, will you cease this highway robbery that is eight copper? Each, I'm guessing. Oh, no, in, in total. Oh, in total. Uh, you, oh, well, in that case, then I guess we don't have to help you then. Have you seen this place? All right, all right. Tell you, okay, tell you what. I'll yeah. give you eight copper each each let's just call it four silver in total one silver per person if you get rid of those louts behind the bar that's unfair that ain't done sir no problem and ludo I cracks his knuckles <laughs> what was that tarquin sorry i think you got yourself a deal all right sounds good and do try not to damage everything too much, I... I mean, I know it's... The place is already pretty much destroyed, but <laughs> you can see he's just <laughs> threadbare holding on to the last bit of hope. Um, so you see behind... So refresh... Um, yes. Refresh uh, my memory. Uh, what is the status of this robbery? I'm guessing a few people came <laughs> in and they just started helping themselves? So, from what he described and what you can see before you, it seemed as though um, it was very busy in here. So, a few people went behind the bar to go and assist. Um, but whether they just climbed over the bar or whatever happened, one of the adventurers that was being served, or not because it was busy, uh, saw that there was uh, a lot of people going behind the bar. And because adventurers, they assumed that everyone was just raiding the alcohol supply. And some form of um, riot occurred in which uh, the bar was overthrown uh, and reclaimed by the hunters who did not want to pay for any alcohol and got free alcohol out of it. Um, the surrounding scenes suggest that most of those uh, initially in the riots are asleep or very happy and satiated of drunkenness. Um, but there are still few lingerers behind the bar 
in the form of the the double dwarves <laughs> that you encountered, um, as well mm. as um, you also see a a dragonborn man. You see an elven woman and a tiefling man. Mm. Okay, the dwarves uh, over by the taps, are they kind of passed out-ish? Are they... They're all proactively currently drinking directly from the taps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I guess just, Ludo will just try to... Just like a to... water fountain. <laughs> <laughs> Ludo's going to try and just uh, kind of, you know, walk around to the other side of them and kind of just body usher them, start ushering them all out. Okay, okay, everybody, come on, let's go. No mm. more free drinks. I'm drinking here! Just one of the dwarves just yells at you and the other one underneath and goes, Yeah, he's drinking here. You've had enough. Now it's time to go. And he starts pushing and put, you know, just kind oh. of brushing, basically brooming these people out of the room. <laughs> I think that's a contested strength check. So yeah. if, if any of you are pushing people out of the way, <laughs> please roll a strength, uh, strength or athletics. Either is acceptable as a form of currency for getting rid of the drinkers. All right, I got a 15. Okay. 17. Nice. Are Alora and Bifon joining in? I think Ludo's got this. Alora okay. cannot push. <laughs> Alora's not very strong. Alora will have to use other ways. <laughs> If Aloro has other ideas of what to do, please let us know. Um, Aloro goes over to a group and, and says, You are all going to become very stinky and gross if you do not leave this area. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, this is me asking as a but she can She can say it with more confidence. Hold on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 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 You are all going to become very stinky and gross if you do not leave this area right now. Hey, there you go. Roll an intimidation check for me, not at disadvantage, <laughs> as it was previously going to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, as as for the as we'll see what this does in terms of the the strength they might give in. Sixteen. Mm. Wonderful! All right, so you see um, a, cu a couple of the uh, a couple of them just kind of turn around and go. I don't, I don't want to be stinky. Yeah, like, uh, I, I kind of like I already showered this week. I don't want to, I don't want to have to do it again, man. Oh, fine. Um, and you see two of the <laughs> two of the four leave, or two of the five leave, because two dwarves is two people. Um, <laughs> Um, as for the strength ta checks, um, Bifon, I mean, sorry, Luto, you successfully just managed to topple the, the Tower of Dwarf. Um, <laughs> and they just go, no, I was drinking that! And he kind of, you see this kind of very short dwarven man, um, kind of quite pale with just a rush of ginger hair, kind of looks half like he's been electrocuted um and he kind of square tries to square up to you despite the significant height difference goes what's that about eh i was drinking and now you're leaving no i i i think i'd rather keep drinking if that's all right with you is that, i'm sorry is that all right with you your highness oh i'm not the king but I will crown you, I say, and I bring out a big old meat tenderizer. What does that mean? Oh. <laughs> I'm going to roll a, an insight check to see if he knows what that means. He does not know what that means. I, ain't gonna... I can't wear that on my head. It's a, ham it's a hammer. This in your pace if you do not oh. leave. Oh, is that a threat? Yeah. <laughs> Roll an intimidation check. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Uh, Tarquin, 
Equally, you do manage to um, push aside uh, the tiefling man who just kind of... <coughs> oh, what? Oh, oh. hello. Yo. Do I know you from somewhere? Oh, oh, you better say you know me, because if you don't, you're going to be the fifth person at least that says, I don't know you, and I'm getting tired of it. He's going to he's gonna squint at you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's an incredible roll. I'm on fire. He kind of squints at you. Uh, do you... Mm, do you know Sheila? Sheila? Sheila, Sheila's wedding, right? Yes, uh, you're yeah. the the guy with the and he like shakes his hands, <laughs> like like he's invisibly throttling someone. Yeah, the the guy, right? That was you. Yeah, I'm the guy with the, with the hey. fountain. Yes. Oh yeah. my goodness! How? Why don't you, you go outside? Him? It's a beautiful day. We'll catch a, we'll catch up later. Oh, you're acting like we didn't, you know, spend all night at that alcohol fountain just getting absolutely shit-faced. You don't remember that? Oh, to be fair. <laughs> I, I have to roll something end. to lie to this guy. <laughs> you can roll a deception check if you want. <laughs> Alright. Okie dokie. <laughs> Fourteen. Uh, yeah, you don't need to. I rolled a two. <laughs> I'm on fire! Uh... Yeah, what do, what do you what do you tell him? Well, basically, the party's over, my friend. We need to clean this place, and you already drank too much. You know what? This is why Sheila likes you so much. You know, because you just understand. You can just read people. You know. I know. I'm, I'm such a sensitive person. Like, puts a hand on your shoulder, like, getting real with you, like, bro moment. Just, <laughs> you. You know, if you were a hero, I would call you my hero, but you're not. So, I would call you my friend. Wait, he kind you of... said I'm not a hero? Uh, no. <laughs> you really have forgotten that night by the fountain, haven't you? Uh, it's, fine. it's fine. It was just the best night of my life. Oh, um, <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go now. Kind of taps you on the shoulder and <laughs> hobbles <laughs> out. Sorry for the guy. <laughs> <laughs> he really thought he knew you. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> right. So, um, Bifon, while we, while we, sorry, Ludo. I keep, I keep, they're right next to each other. Um. <laughs> Ludo, what we what we doing? What we uh, doing Fifteen we intimidation thing? check. Okay, <laughs> the dwarf the dwarf guy kind of squares up to you and looks up and down, and then kind of looks really far up to meet your eyes. I was like, right next time, yeah. Oh, okay. Shh. Next time, next gonna, time, drink gonna, is on me. Okay. Gonna get. Oh, it is. Sweet. All right. That's all you had to say to me. Okay, let's peace out of here. And takes his other dwarf friend, kind of glares at you <laughs> from under <laughs> bushy eyebrows. And all four of them successfully leave. Congratulations. Um, the bartender just kind of looks at you all just like, How the fuck did you do that? Well, um, promise is a promise, I guess. And he uh, palms out. Uh, four silver and puts it on the uh, puts it on the bar countertop. Uh, Ludo puts his hand over it and also over his hand, so it's like a big old hand over his hand over the money. And he looks to his friends and he says, "Okay, what if you keep the money while we're here for the hunt? We keep the bar safe. You give us a place to sleep, food, and to drink." Run that but run run that by me one more time. So you you wanna stay here? We stay here, you give uh -huh. us rooms, uh-huh, we you give us food, you give us drink, and we keep the place safe. We're very uh. strong, see very strong, and he flexes <laughs> and he points to to Tarquin. Oh, yeah. And I wanna flex too. <laughs> 
<laughs> Roll a performance check for me, guys. <laughs> hey. Point on it, show. The gun show's in town. <laughs> Oh, I got a six. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh 21. Show. Second oh, 20. Shit. God dang. What, what is... What is... Yeah, what what does Ludo Ludo and Ayoro do? Aloro do? I'm just keep saying Ayoro. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Ayoro. <laughs> uh, Ludo does a big two-handed flex, and uh, but in the process, he puts the seagull on his head, and the seagull flexes as well. <laughs> We're all flexing here. <laughs> I'll, I'll allow it. <laughs> <Aloro>. <laughs> Oh. Alor 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 is just gonna do a, f a flip. <laughs> give, give me that acrobatics check. I have a good bonus. Do it. Do, do <laughs> roll. You know, now there's nothing I want more right now than you, for you to roll that acrobatics check, man. <laughs> 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 give me that acrobatics check. Fourteen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You you pull off a flip. You pull off a sick flip. <laughs> um, sick flip. Sick flip. Um, he. <laughs> I love how you guys are just like we can protect this place. Alora does a flip. Ludo's seagull does a flex on his head, and Tarquin's like, "Yeah, Tarquin." <laughs> is is beef on uh, aiding this incredible, already incredible performance, or just I rolled an eleven plus three, so I yeah. flex my pecs, but the timing is slightly off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like the flip, the flex. Tarquin's like thumbs up, and then Beefon's like, "Hey!" <laughs> a few seconds after, <laughs> and he goes, well, "That was quite a performance. Uh, you really didn't have to do all that." What? Look, what I'm gonna say to you, right? This is a hunting festival. There are hundreds of bastards here that want nothing more than some eel. No disrespect. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect you to be able to keep this place safe for this festival, right? If you want to try, I'll pay you for any times that it's needed. But otherwise, I do. I guess I could pull you a room upstairs if you, uh, if you just not fancy the tents in. Two rooms. The adventurers that oh, <laughs> said that so aggressively. He did, didn't he, bit? Thought he was quite friendly, but he was quite a haggler, it seems. Look, I think it would be worth the protection, honestly. And it's only for a few days, you know, until the festival's over. Good kitty. Uh, meow, meow. <laughs> yes. Um. Pat, 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 pat. Uh, 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 yeah, yes. Is that? Did you? Is that a seagull? Is that? Can I have it? I uh, put the kind seagull. Bears his fangs a little bit. <laughs> I put the seagull down by them and we put them face to face. Are you letting go of the seagull? No. <laughs> it's very important. It's a question that I, it's a question that I needed to ask. <laughs> okay, you put them face to face. <laughs> Can I eat it? No, I like? might eat it. I eat it. Oh. Oh. What? Ah, uh, well, you know what? I'll accept your offer, kind sir. Uh, by the by, this is the sun site. If you could even see the sign outside, I wouldn't be surprised if someone was playing badminton with it. Uh, my name is Erwin. I am uh, the bark. Uh oh. Oh. Erwin the bark. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> <laughs> that was so. Abrupt. <laughs> uh, take this time. Oh, Discord noped out. Uh oh. Well, uh, take this time to say thanks to whoever just uh, joined in, who followed the channel. I think it was Monty Fun Buns. To answer your question, as well as Boogie Boogie Woogie's question, uh, yes, the VOD will be up after this. You know what? Uh, why don't we take this time? We've been playing for a little bit now. Why don't we take this time, do a quick little five-minute break, everybody? Cool with that? That sounds good. Yeah. yeah.
Oh, hi. Hey, Key. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because, like, a couple of minutes ago, like, my Twitch window just closed itself, and I was like, oh, that was weird. And then Discord just decided to do the same. I was like, oh, well, fuck whatever I was saying, I guess. <laughs> um, where were we? Well, I, I was actually uh, saying it might be a good time to do a quick little five-minute break. Sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah let's do it. All right, I'm going to switch us over to the screen <laughs> and mute us so they can't hear us talking about them. Yeah. Oh. Oh.
Pretty. <laughs> we are back for Overlong. <laughs> um, we were you were just introducing us to Erwin the Bark. Erwin the lumberjack uh, bartender ah. man. Ah, okay. Bark. So, last we left, <laughs> the party had travelled all the way to the tavern where they had thwarted drunk people <laughs> and are uh, speaking to Erwin, the uh, head bartender, and a cat whose name they have not yet learned. But the cat does indeed look to you all. Oh, I've bloody lost it now. Where's the cat gone? There he is. Um, you look back to the large fluffy cat who looks to all of you. Uh, and uh, my pleasure is all mine. My name is Finny. Uh, F-I-N-N-Y. Um, usually, I, you know, I don't particularly like being pet, but I have to say a lot of adventurers have pet me today, and it's rather quite quite an incredible thing. Um, so, you know, if perchance you are happy for me to come and visit your rooms at varying times for little uh, scritches, I believe they're called, um, that would be wonderful. Uh, but I think if that is all in agreement, including the scritches, um, I think I think we can let them have a couple of rooms for a few days, don't you, Erwin? Kind of looks at you all. A little smile kind of creeping across his face. All right, <sighs> rooms three and four. And he kind of reaches down, pulls out a couple of keys and puts them on the desk. Uh, they're next door to each other. Uh, there is breakfast, if you consider ale breakfast. Uh, I guess I can cook something if you need. We've got a kitchen room back that doesn't really see much use. Oh, I'll take uh, care uh, of that. And Ludo just uh, smiles and disappears into the back. Uh, uh, <laughs> does he just <laughs> climb over the bar? <laughs> just whoop. Roll. He kind of, you know, there's that thing where he kind of like rolls <laughs> over it. You know, it's kind of like he gets up next to it. And it just, <laughs> yeah. Does he still have the seagull? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Barrel rolls Before with the Before you go. Before you go, <laughs> um, Erwin, you wouldn't happen to have uh, one of those little umbrellas for the drinks? Or do you just not do that in a place like this? Ah, uh, I, he kind of like wipes his forehead. I don't know, man. Uh, it's probably, I think, I think we do. I think, and you see Finny kind of get up and cat stretch. All his slightly sticky fur still sticking out. Um, and he kind of uh, climbs over one of the back shelves, climbs up the wall, and kind of uh, brings down a little kind of um, hollowed out bamboo container of some sorts. Uh, brings it down in his mouth. I think. I think. I think <laughs> it's so dusty. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Just cat vomits for a sec. Uh, doesn't actually, <laughs> but. Cat heaves. Oh, God! How long have we had these? Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. And kind of opens the top, and you see a few little paper, delicate umbrellas uh, for cocktails. Never been used. Quite dusty. Quite kind of faded colours. <laughs> Clearly been there a good long time and never been opened. Uh, Finny, yeah, you not are a doll. Yourself. You wouldn't happen to have some string, would you? <laughs> Oh, Thanks. One second. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've got. I've got some string. Give me a second. I'll get to my knapsack. Uh, and he kind of goes under the under the front of the bar, and kind of comes out with a big red ball of yarn, and just. Wah. There you go. Uh, one may be able to gain intelligence, but one can never get opposable thumbs. It would seem. But yes, uh, what 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 are you 
doing? Pet, pet, pet. Uh, uh, Bifom then hmm. pops the <laughs> stick off of the end of the umbrella and attempts to fasten the string to it. Oh my I guess uh, maybe a sleight of hand check? Yeah, I'll, I'll allow a sleight of hand check for that. Sleight of hand or performance, whichever you prefer. Um. <laughs> I roll the damn two. All right. Um, in your eyes, <laughs> you see just a beautiful, like, beautifully complimentary, um, the same color as the tip of a seagull's beak, you know, where it looks like they've been eating ketchup. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, like, perfectly complimentary. You see the little umbrella sticking out. See, most would consider it wonky, but you consider it avant-garde. It's 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 giving refinery. It's giving haute couture. <laughs> it's giving sleigh. Uh, everyone else, you see an attempt <laughs> at some form of woven knitted tiny seagull headband with a with a wonky umbrella in it. The colors are mismatched beyond human comprehension. Um, but it is it is a successful little umbrella knit thing. I place the string around the seagull's head, and I look to Ludo <laughs> and say, I know it's not much, but um, think about what you do next. Mm. I'm going to go practice some crafting. I think I need some practice. Hey, Al. Looks over at Aluro. Yes, Ludo? Is a hat a clothes? Hmm. <laughs> Is a hat a clothes? I don't well... want to interrupt you, but uh, your answer may determine if that bird lives or dies. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth is going to go on in there? It... Uh, it's definitely, definitely close. Def definitely close. Of course. Yes, definitely close. Oh. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd pretty much say it's close as well. I know you didn't ask, but, you know, we're having the whole business deal now, so I figure it's probably in our best interest. I think it's close. Okay. I'm just petting the cat. Okay. <laughs> Ludo as, looks... As you... Oh, yeah, I was going to say, Ludo looks kind of disappointed, but he pets the <laughs> seagull on his little hat and disappears into the kitchen. <laughs> oh, Jesus. That was like such morbid imagery. Just like the door to the kitchen opens and it's just pitch black in there. Ludo goes in backwards <laughs> and stares out as he pushes the door closed. <laughs> um, as uh, Bifon, as you're petting uh, Finny... You you kind of see him just just melting under your under your pats. Um, he begins to do little cat sniffs, his, and he he kind of follows follows his nose towards Aloro. I say, do you, um, <clears throat> kind of looks at the rest of the uh, company present and kind of tries to lean in as much as a cat can. Do you have, do you have cats? You could say that. Uh, you could definitely say that. <laughs> and she uh, and uh, they they go to pick up. Uh, oh, I've I've forgotten the cat's name. <gasps> Cat name reveal. <laughs> 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 But I, uh, I, I can do an animal handling check. Oh, you don't need to. They are your own cats. They are, they are one with you. Oh, all right. Well, then this this cat is getting <laughs> swooped up. Oh, you're picking up Finny. Yeah, I'm picking up Finny. <gasps> okay. Um. Oh, hello. Um. Hi. Yes, you definitely. You you. So do you have like cats with you now? Because you just. Are you a cat, bud? Like, are you cat folk? Secretly? I do, in fact, have cats on me. Wink. Wink. What? Like, other than me? 
Of course. Other than you, yes, other than you. What? <laughs> he like kind of looks see? around and goes quiet and goes. Could could you could you show me the kitties? Um, Alro <laughs> puts Finny down very delicately, and then reaches into their bag and pops out a treat. <gasps> Are you going to toss the? treat onto the ground. I am going to toss the treat onto the ground. Are you going to roll it? I am going to roll it. I am going to roll it. I am gonna roll, I have, I have to... roll, roll a d8 for me. I'm going to roll a d8 for you. <laughs> <laughs> y'all will understand before long. Y'all will understand. Oh my gosh. My Nathan Lane's coming out. I'm so excited. I got a two. Okay. Uh, before you, you all see... Um, Laura take out Laura take out a, a, a little cat snack one could say oh Jesus Christ <laughs> <laughs> you see, oh no <laughs> <laughs> you see do you see <clears throat> you see Laura take out a little kitty snack from the bag that the tabaxi man was rummaging through earlier um, the little kitty snack looks somewhat like a cube of meat and a small kind of would fit in in your palm the palm of your hand easily small perfect cube of meat um tossing it upon the ground about 10 to 20 feet or so away from you all um you see the little slab of meat just on the ground just kind of sits there for a second uh i mean I'm slightly confused as to what's meant to... And before any more seconds can happen, you just see this burst of bright light all kind of have to cover your eyes a little bit. <laughs> and suddenly, before you, you just hear it. <laughs> as a panther is now standing in the center of the town. <laughs> Kitty! What? Okay. In the gods? Is it safe? I think it's safe, and then Aluro goes to, to mount the, the panther. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Make a dexterity saving throw. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> can you imagine? Uh, sorry. <laughs> gotta, gotta be a fucky DM sometimes. Um, yeah, you go and mount, mount your panther. Um... Erwin's mouth just hanging open. See, I thought I wouldn't see anything weird or happening here today, but I guess I was wrong. So, where did that come from? Where? That's a <laughs> wonderful question, and uh, one that I don't entirely have an answer to. Huh. Right. See, it's... It's strange, but I've been followed by cats my whole life. Or, well, not my whole life, but a good good portion of my life. Well, yes, but that's a, that's, that's a fucking panther. <laughs> Seems like a big kitty to me. <laughs> you just hear, like, the little chuffs of the panther as you kind of just hold the side of its face, just... Ah, when I figured you for a cat person, this wasn't quite the nature of it. And kind of <laughs> hops off of the hops off of the desk and uh, walks <laughs> walks over to the panther, kind of looking up at it, and gently nuzzles its leg, and the panther just very gently bops <laughs> Finny on the head. <clears throat> oh, wow! What a magnificent, magnificent beast! Oh, let me uh, <clears throat> uh meow, me meow, me. meow. <laughs> and you, <laughs> you just see him start and meow uh, at the at the panther, who just kind of. <sighs> oh, interesting! My goodness, yes, yeah, quite meow, 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 meow. Um, so interesting. Um, you are all very interesting. This is going to be a fun few days. Oh, it's just, it's just a panther there. Did you? Oh, 
He just, he's just taking it, taking it in, like looking at like a re- like a really fancy car, just kind of walking around the outside, <laughs> like in a circle, just inspecting. Just like, oh, that's really cool. That's a cool model. I want to be that. Um, but yes. Meanwhile, uh, Luto. Yes. I'm scared to ask. What what's going on in that kitchen, buddy? <laughs> he's uh, making everybody dinner. What do we got? Well. That depends what you're using for protein, or if you are indeed currently using anything for protein. <laughs> well, uh, that depends on what they have for protein. <laughs> <laughs> roll, a, roll an investigation check at advantage for me, please. Okay. Better Everybody, help. pray for Seagull. Pray for, hashtag pray for Seagull. Doesn't even have a name yet, poor guy. All right. 16 and a 10. We'll take the 16. Sweet. So with a 16, you find the surprising amount of fresh um, fruit and vegetables. You find um, what appears to be um, some chicken, some tofu. You find a variety of oils and everything. There's enough here to make a decent meal. For okay. absolute sure. Uh, I think Kaludo is going to cook up some... Chicken nuggets in a tomato puree reduction con- compote, mm-hmm. uh, sweetened, of course, and uh, make some Parmesan crust for the chicken to be Ooh. rolled in. And and it is chicken we're cooking, just to make absolutely sure. Well, I mean, he has a hat now, so. That's very true. Yeah. Um. You know, <laughs> Ludo will take time while uh, while he's waiting for the things to fry and finish cooking and whatnot. He's gonna take. Um, he's gonna find an apple and uh, skin it a bit to kind of help use the rind to toughen and support the hat, so that by the end of it, it looks like uh, his little bird friend has a hat similar to his big old rice picking hat. Amazing! Oh my god! Oh. It's it's built upon the hat that has already been given. It is. Uh, I simply... don't ordinarily beg for fan art, but um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my knees. <laughs> um, incredible. Uh, <laughs> so cooking away while uh, the panther. You do just at the corner of your hearing, just hear a loud growl. But um, you know, you're halfway through. You know, sauteing and, and seasoning, and crisping, and yeah. You hear cooking. you hear loud cooking sounds and squawking from the bird. <laughs> um, amazing. I have a feeling I'm gonna get a plate with my shitty hat on it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It wasn't. It wasn't that. It. It's it, it rather homely charm to it. I would. I would say. Yeah. You know, I. I would commission one of those hats myself. I'll see what I can do. Oh, ever such a dear. Thank you so much. Um, right, well, uh, shall I show you to your rooms? Yes, please. Lead yes, the way. Yes, please. Wonderful. So, um, it kind of leads you uh, around a back corner of the bar, um, up some stairs, um, just to this very quaint little corridor, um, you see um, <laughs> there's the kind of the first room, the door's kind of half open, there's just a leg sticking out, um, and some very interesting snores coming from that room, just full, full drunken snores, just... <laughs> Jesus, I surprised myself with that. Good job I don't... <laughs> Good job I don't snore. <laughs> um, and then you uh, head over to rooms three and four, which are adjacent to each other, and you see... Though there are double beds, they are on the quainter side, you know, just very plain, very uh, utilitarian. Um, but there is a little cabinet with a basin for washing and cleaning. Um, a slightly polished mirror on the side. Everything one needs for a basic but comfortable night's sleep. Um, both rooms identical and next to each other. And with an incredible view directly into rock face. Um... <laughs> the rock face that this inn is slightly kind of uh, on the edge of. Um, you're not quite sure why they built windows for this lack of view. But the, I mean, the rock's really nice if we have any rock aficionados. Um, it's a nice generic 
gray. Yep. Um, so, so these are your rooms. Uh, we can accommodate any, uh, extra towels and, and such sh should you need. Um, if we need you to protect the bar for any reason, we, we, we shall probably be yelling. You will probably, well, you'll probably hear a lot of yelling, so I'll, uh, try and find some more efficient way to, um, send the message along to you. Um, but what will these rooms do, do you think? Satisfy? These rooms are just perfect, my friend. Now, oh, wonderful. if you... Follow my advice. Please don't walk around naked around here for as long as we're here. All right? For your survival. <laughs> kind of looks, <laughs> looks down at himself. Would I be considered naked now? I'll get to work on that hat. Oh, wonderful. Um, may, may I inquire as to why I must wear clothes suddenly? Is, 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 it, is it like a religious thing like you just must wear don't worry too or... much about it um here <laughs> here's it... your hat i rolled a 16. oh sweet you just been like <laughs> making it as you've been walking along and showing the rooms amazing <laughs> to protect um, everyone it's... hats for everyone <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you make you make it's gonna a be little... my major I mean... skill <laughs> Des describe, describe to us the little hat you have made. What, what have you successfully this made? This one's a lot less lopsided. The string <laughs> actually fits underneath <gasps> the chin very, very nicely. Um, and it's a beautiful pink sort of tropical scene. Oh. Oh. My. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I don't think anyone's ever made me anything before. And you see him just kind of looking at it. Um, what's your passive insight, everybody? <laughs> Let me see. Passive insight. 13. Sweet. Yeah, I'd say if you get if yours is Ten. a 13 or higher, um, you will you you see him. His eyes getting a little bit watery. He's, he's getting a little bit emotional. He's definitely touched. His, um, my mother always loved pink. <laughs> and I do too, you know. <laughs> when... Anyway, um, <clears throat> yes, oh, lovely, thank you. I shall treasure this forever and it will stay in my heart, uh, regardless of its material um, form and conditions. Uh, wonderful. So, uh, yes, those are your rooms. <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> I'm gonna just I'm gonna I'll, I'll go for a bit, but if you need anything, just come back later. Okay. Yeah. And you just kind of you see him kind of puddle off um and kind of climb up this mini set of cat stairs that are on one of the far walls, um, and into a little basket. Um where mm. he just kind of gets cozy and um and and seemingly has a cat nap. So, how are we divvying up the rooms? I like number three, so whoever wants to join can come in, or I can have it all to myself until our friend comes back with food. Okay, I take it Aluro's getting her own room. I don't mind. You don't Unless mind? you guys mind. <clears throat> well, if you don't, like, I have no idea. Like, they're both exactly the same. We'll have to take one of the beds out of one and put it in the other. If you want your privacy or if you don't mind a roommate, choose who you wish. Mm. Does anyone sleep naked? <laughs> 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 yeah, who sleeps naked? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> that'd probably no. be a problem for Ludo too. <laughs> Beef in, on just in the middle of the night. His hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Salutes to Beef. <laughs> then how about I join Tarquin? 
Sounds good. All right. This then we're settled. Carry one of these beds. Right. You hear a banging of like uh, metal <laughs> on metal, like ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling, coming from downstairs. Oh, I just got to sleep. Oh, someone cooked something. It smells like chicken. And you see, <laughs> see Finny just get back up, does a big stretch, kind of poodles down the stairs. Food's up. Uh, you see Erwin come in, Ludo. All right, well, bloody hell. That is quite a spread. Yeah. The meal's not bad either, eh? <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. thank that you. Was, <laughs> sorry, that was um inappropriate. No, um, it's very appropriate. I look good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I mean, I'm not going to deny it, you know. Um... All right, is uh, I mean, is there enough for? And he oh, kind of yeah. points to himself. And uh, he basically made uh, enough for like a big old family style spread of uh, nuggets and different dipping sauces and some fried veggies and uh, a little bit of a tossed salad. It's a really nice, uh, happy little spread to eat. And he intentionally made it family style, so everybody has to eat it all together. Oh, so. Cool. If you all head down to the kitchen, you will see this wonderful spread and also the meal. Uh, <laughs> um, you see, you see, Erwin kind of gesture to the to the bird uh, in the room, <laughs> the new elephant in the room, to the seagull in the room. Um, so is, is he getting any to eat? Or <laughs> of course, he's part of the group now. <laughs> you feed him a nugget. Yeah, you feed him the seagull a nugget. If he wants one, yeah. <laughs> Incredible. He just, he just like a, like a python eating a rat. Just, <laughs> just. <laughs> 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 when, uh, when ev does everybody come down and gather up? Yep. Yes. Yes. I'm here. Excellent. <laughs> uh, Ludo introduces the spread. He uh, details what he, what he's made. And he's basically made chicken nuggets and ketchup for his friend Tarquin, <laughs> his new friend Tarquin. And he said, uh, and, and I did it all with the help of my new assistant, my sous chef. I would like you all to meet my new friend who I named after all of you. And he uh, holds up uh, the seagull in one palm with his, with his big old hat that looks like Ludo's hat. And says, uh, this named after all of you is my new friend, Friends. Friends. That's a wonderful friends. name. <laughs> Everybody eat up. Come on, friends. <laughs> Whoever just posted in character discussions, oh. I'm not going to look at it right now, but it better be a fucking seagull. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Amazing. You know what? You know what? Have a point of inspiration, you bastard. For Hooray! Friends. Oh my god. Okay, wonderful. So you all tuck into this incredible meal, um, feeling fed, rejuvenated, and open to more exploration for the evening. Um, as you finish up eating, um, you can see it's kind of heading uh, a bit more towards the evening side of afternoon. Um, you you all see um, uh, or hear the kind of door open quite violently, uh, kind of a ding a ling, -a -ling rather than a ding -a -ling. <laughs> as you kind of finish eating up. Um, you see a slightly uh, alarmed looking uh, blonde woman, um, kind of a very... Uh, What's the word? Um, picnic apt uh, gingham pink dress on. Um, uh, kind of a big big layered skirt and um, some weirdly large adventurer boots that don't quite match the aesthetic. Um, and she kind of comes in and you see her looking around, um, seemingly a human woman. Uh, does anyone have any assistance they, they could land? 
Uh, I'm in need of assistance. Is that a panther? So. <laughs> Is the panther also eating nuggies? <laughs> <laughs> if she was going to bring it up inside, you think she would have brought it up when all those barbarians were in here? I'll uh, assist you if you'd like. What's going on? Um, well, uh, hi. <laughs> it's awesome, awfully nice to meet you. Um, my name is Fene. Um, I am a Be member fun. of the... Uh, I'm sorry? The stairs. Pleased to meet you. She she looks she dead ass looks around for a set of stairs. Um, there is there are stairs in here. No, uh, the stairs. Uh, never mind. Uh, beef on. Um, what's going on? What with what is evening? what is? I have some beef on my head. Uh, <laughs> oh it's my oh! Name. Yes. I am. Ah, I am. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, um, what a what an imaginative name. Um, well, it is incredible. And she was you. born with it. Oh, um, amazing. Um, are you all kind of coming out of the kitchen at this point, or were you just kind of eating in the bar to begin with? Yeah, I think we were eating in the main bar area. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. So she kind of looks around at the group, getting a, getting a vibe, and um, sure, this song will do. Uh, she, she looks around like, well, uh, I'm in you, and she points to Aluro. She points to you. You're perfect. You'd be perfect. Um, I'm perfect sorry. for what? You've just got. Have you ever? Uh, Performed before. Uh, what kind of performance? Oh, any and all, whether uh, slam poetry, um, opera, uh, 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 what other kind? Of, fire eating, uh, strip. No, I've uh, never done anything like that. <laughs> oh well, um, you see, I'm from the uh, Osborne Association of Theatrics, and uh, we've been. Hired to put on a show here on behalf of Prince Wilbur, you know, who's running this whole thing. Um, and we're meant to do a show tonight, but we've had a couple of actors drop out. And, I mean, you're all welcome to join if you can. We have a couple of roles that we need filling in. And, and you just, you look exactly like our protagonist. I know that's a lot of pressure, but I promised you there aren't many lines at all, and it's... You'd be perfect for it. Would there be compensation? Oh, of course. Uh, um, she, she kind of rummages in a pouch that's kind of slung over her shoulder, uh, resting at her hip. Yeah, I could easily give you a couple of gold each for anyone who wants to join in. Although I, I'm flexible if you need higher rates, you know, union payments and all. <laughs> Not that we're a union, we're a non, uh, non-profit organization. Well, we would love you as hell. What do you say? Fawn, Ludo, Tarquin, what do we think? What do I have to do? I'm, I'm going to dance? Uh, no, da no dancing needed, sweetie. Uh, just, we've got some scripts here. You see, she takes a binder out of her what you realize to be a bag of holding because it's far too small to be carrying an entire binder. And um, she hands out a slip of paper to each of you. Um, so uh, if you, uh, what was your name, friend? She looks to you, Aloro. Aloro. Oh, amazing. Um, if you could read for our protagonist, uh, character one, and then, uh, hmm, could go either way between the rest of you. And you y'all feel like a princess? <laughs> yes. All right, I mean, you Yes, I can see it now. <laughs> yeah, uh take this. Here you go. So you're reading for the princess. Um and then we have another hero and a villain. Have we got any preferences either way? 
Mm, I guess I can be the hero, just like in real life. <laughs> oh, you are? Of course. Whoa. Don't you remember me? <laughs> God damn it. The number of roles. <laughs> <laughs> Every single NPC it's is going to have I'm, to roll. <laughs> it's the fact I'm also canonically rolling bad for these that is making this Yes, incredible. yes, you have to roll a one every time. <laughs> um, you do look familiar. What missions would I know you from? What do you mean? I pretty much saved this world. Oh. I'm uh, Tarquin. The, the, the world needed saving? I didn't know about any of that happening. <sighs> I guess I'll take the bill and then. Okay, sounds good. So uh, I will get you your lines really quick. Um, chat amongst yourselves while I sort through these papers. Both in and out of character. <laughs> so just be talk among yourselves while I... <laughs> no, really, Tarquin, if you want to be the hero, feel free to be the hero. Uh, they're gonna drive me down the path of madness. Don't worry, I'll be the villain. Uh, I gotta get used to it. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Oh, I am so, I am so thankful. I will happily pay you up front as well. And if, you know, if this, uh, takes off in any capacity, I, uh, I'll make sure to, uh, get you, uh, royalties. We had some issues with the last time we did a performance. There were demands of unionization and all of that stuff, uh, which I totally understand. But again, we are just, uh, just I got a, a, I got a question. I got a question. Yes, of course. When is all this taking place? Because uh, we're here for the hunt. Starts oh, tomorrow. It's, it's only like, oh no, 15 minutes from now. It'll be just oh. after the announcement. So, we're not doing a rehearsal or anything, I take it. Oh, no, no, that ain't, ne that ain't needed. Uh, you can take your scripts out with you if, if you need. Um, <laughs> it is a... Uh, it is, it is no worries whatsoever, all right? Um, so she hands out a sheet of scripts to each of you, <laughs> which I will post in our chat. Excellent. Um, Amazing. Nay, don't, I will say for the, for the sake of, for the sake of story, try not to read ahead. Oh. Um, <laughs> So, Nay, you will be character one. Um, <laughs> uh, whoever the villain is will be playing character three. Uh, okay. The princess will be playing um, character four. Okay. And the second hero that is not Nay will be character two. Um... I will try to highlight this as well as I can. Discord is butchering <laughs> the, the formatting, but you know, if it happens, it happens. It's I fine. love this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it is it is a it is a D and D staple. It is a D and D staple. Um, Grandpa's weird. I see you so here for the first time. I, Thank I, you for joining. I, I've done it before, and I was like, I can do it again. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Right. I think that is... Oh, it's too long. Hang on. <laughs> it's too long! <laughs> so, she hands you all um, a script each. Um, I haven't highlighted all of them, but it'll, it'll make itself easier. Everyone only has one or two. Everyone only has one or two lines each, so uh, if you can come with, I can get you into, like, Hair and makeup, get you all ready and costumed and prepared. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Oh, oh, I'll get the money out for you right now. Um, and she hands you all three gold each because she's, you know, she's feeling grateful. <laughs> oh, damn. So nice. all add three gold to inventors. Um, so with that, uh, do you follow her to the hair and <laughs> makeup station? Of course. Um, so have any of you seen the, uh, Osprin Theatric Society before? For orphans? We are doing this for the no. orphans? Yeah! 
They'll be ever so, ever so thankful. Oh. Hmm. What would I roll to find out if this is a real thing? Would that be history or something? Uh, insight check. Insight, insight? or history. Yeah, I I'd allow either. <laughs> ah. A con with Four an entire script. Six plus five. <laughs> so, not much there. Um, it's not particularly a, a guy of the of of this kind of theater from from this side of the world. Yeah, you're not really sure how it works. Um, mm. You're a lot more familiar with the theater of home, um, or not potentially, depending on your love of the arts. <laughs> but um, as you kind of all follow her back towards the tents. Um, you find one tent in particular um, that uh, does indeed have a few uh, different animal folk orphans um, wandering around, uh, looking very excited. Oh, uh, did you did you find some people? Uh, you see this tiny pigeon folk child um, <laughs> wearing a little vest, <laughs> like a little oh, little spiral God. patterned vest. Um, kind of look at you all with starry eyes. Uh, he is spellbound by all of you. Um, are you, are you all, are you all, are you all doing the play? Yes, indeed we are. Oh. And he kind of looks at Alora for a second. <gasps> you look just like I pictured them. Just like the protagonist. Are they playing the protagonist, Miss Fanny? Yes, they're playing the protagonist for you, huh? <gasps> this pigeon kid is about to have a heart attack. Like, it's <laughs> properly psyched. Oh my, go oh my goodness. Um, well, I can't wait to see the show. We can't wait to perform it for you. Oh my goodness. Oh, this will be my PS. The resistance and kind of walks away in in his in his zone in his little pigeon zone um around you also see a little uh giraffe kid not a giraffe sorry a gazelle kid that would be great though you see a little <laughs> gazelle a gazelle folk kid um she looks mostly disinterested in the entire thing um and before a couple uh more seconds you see a little crow kid come out and he's just like oh hey guys Oh! oh! You found some people. <laughs> yes, I found some people for the show. Oh, a vast ye! And you see he pulls out a little cardboard sword. <laughs> a vast ye! Players for the play. Fellow artists. It is pretty wonderful to meet you. My name is Imar. What are your names? I'm Aloro. Hello. Beef one. Beef one. Beef? Oh, that's the best name I've ever heard. Beef one. I'm Ludo. Ludo. I love your hat. Thank you. I, I just cannot believe this. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm gonna roll my fucking dice. <laughs> Oh my god. I feel like I know you from somewhere. And points at Tarquin. <laughs> you better know me. Because you are like the tenth people that don't remember my name. I don't remember your name because you haven't told me yet. But you definitely have a vibe of someone I have met before. Did you kill my father? <laughs> um, was your father an ancient god? I don't know, I'm an orphan. That's like the only... Then probably not. Oh. Don't worry, you're fine. I could be a god? <gasps> that changes everything. It is at this point. <laughs> 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 um, you hear... As soon as I can find it. I thought I named this one. I, I seemingly did not name this one. Oh, I did. I, I didn't, but it's this one. Suddenly, you hear. <laughs> there we go. 
you hear uh, the blaring of um, some horns, uh, alerting you all to the fact that not far from here, uh, on a podium um, that is on top of a rock, it's a podium on a rock, on another podium. No, I'm kidding. Um, you see, um, you hear these horns going off and people kind of begin to pay attention uh, to this podium where one can assume an announcement is happening. Um, looking uh, over towards the podium, you see a uh, fairly petite um, dragon-like tiefling-like woman um, somewhere in between the two. Um, kind of grey skin, very pale light hair that kind of um, is in like a jellyfish style that gets more yellow towards the, the bottom of the hair which kind of um, easily reaches her hips. Um, very much an official kind of leather uniform um, with a little fire emblem, <laughs> fire emblem, uh, not sponsored, <laughs> a little fire emblem on the mm. side of her arm. Um, Alora, please roll a uh, either history or, yeah, I guess a history check for me, please. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's a oh. two. <laughs> it's not awesome. good. Never seen this person in your fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine. Um, so it's like, uh, no. <laughs> so you see, you all see her uh, kind of walk up to the podium. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, folk. I have an announcement. And you hear people go, oh. Oh, it's the fucking announcement! Oh yeah! And kind of start and pay attention from whatever they were doing before. My name is Icta Imbolt, and I am the head of the Hunting Academy and Guild Hall in Ninut. I am here to officially open and officiate and judge and otherwise oversee this festival of the hunt. And you hear, like, one specific crowd from an area um, of tents just kind of go, Oh yeah, Miss Victor, let's go. <laughs> um, <laughs> other people are kind of politely clapping and cheering. The drunk ones are like, "Yeah, Dragon Lady, <laughs> let's go!" Yeah. <laughs> Ludo's very um, excited. He's clapping. He's cheering. He's doing that thing when you put your fingers in your mouth. You do a really high pitched whistle. Yeah, the... he does. Yeah, he's doing that. <laughs> he's very, very. High. Uh, friends just goes. <laughs> joins in battle cries with his dad um, <laughs> um she goes thank you thank you so for those who are unfamiliar with the festival as most of us are because i don't think any of us have been alive for 600 years the festival of the hunt is three days of events a celebration ordained by the royal family of these fa these fair isles on the behalf of wilbur Ferenze the royal crown prince of Ash Sky. You hear a couple of people like, yeah, Wilbur! Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> um, other people like, oh yes, royals, huzzah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I declare this event begun. So, we may, uh, as you may be able to see, we are slightly overbooked on this event. Uh, our apologies for that. We didn't realize that there would be so much interest. Uh, with that in mind, we will have to repeat some of the events just to make sure we can get all of the teams, uh, initiated. Speaking of, for these events, you will be scored as teams. And the highest scores are awarded entry to the round the next day. So, you will all partake in the event tomorrow, and if you succeed well enough... You will be moving on to the event the next day, so on, so forth, until the final day with the final hunt. The evening before each of the events, you will be informed of the nature of the event. However, there will be some interesting events. This may not be like other festivals of the hunts you have been to before. So, there will not be a winner per se, 
but there will be successful teams that survive the final round. So, unless there's, like, someone really badass who just kind of nails it, um, th then there will not be a winner. But, by succeeding in the events leading up to the final event, you will, depending on your scores, gain boons that may assist you in the final battle. So, take heed. Tomorrow! Would you all like to find out the event for tomorrow? She kind of says it seriously, but also, like, kind of feeling herself doing the announcements. <laughs> and you hear a whole group being like, Yes, just tell us what the event is! Basilisk! Basilisk! Beholder! Beholder! Nothing too big that will kill me, please! <laughs> um, variety of cries. Well, while I cannot reveal, and shall not reveal, the nature of tomorrow's monster, what I will say is that a few teams at a time, you will be sent to the Ashen Forest Isle. Your task is to locate, possibly if you can identify, and hunt a creature. There will be only one type of creature present, so you will not be misled by any other tracks. The team on the aisle to do so first successfully, ideally by peaceful means, but not necessarily, will win a prize that may assist them with the upcoming fights the following days. That will be all. Until then, enjoy the festivities, enjoy the celebrations! I believe we have some entertainment happening soon. She kind of, like, <laughs> darts her eyes over towards <laughs> your guys' location. Uh... Fenny gives her a thumbs up and kind of looks back on shore. Yes, the arts. Um, perfect for a festival of hunting. Well, that is me. I will be in the main tent should anyone need anything. But please refer to a crew member first. I am very busy. Thank you. Everyone's like, woo! Ikta imo! Ikta imo! Cheers. Celebrations go around as she leaves the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Allura, roll another, roll another history check for me now you've seen her and heard her. <laughs> fingies, fingies okay, crossed. we're gonna try it one more time. Fingies crossed. Three. Let's go. <laughs> Big money, no whammies. I got a 12. Hell yeah, I would say. You, you're like, oh, that Icta Imbolt. Um, you know Icta Imbolt as being uh, the head of the hunting guild in uh, your semi-hometown of Ninut. Um, you've seen oh. her. She's one of the more present uh, guild hall masters, especially compared to uh, Itirin. Um, but she she's definitely she's definitely got some fans. Um, <laughs> she's definitely considered one of the cooler of the three main uh, guild masters. Um, and although she is tiny and kind of deceptively small, um, she is an incredible huntress. That no one's ever seen hunt, but she's an incredible huntress. Tarquin, looking at her, you're like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> but they have vibe. <laughs> whatever whatever that is, like, I vibe with that, because I'm also heroic. Uh, yeah, and a legend. unless you think uh, you <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so yes, she leaves the stage, and Fene goes... Right, well, uh, we got showtime soon. Are you all clear on the, uh, on the instructions? Yeah, re read the words, and then we go out there, and when it's our turn, we read the words. Amazing! Have you met your co-stars yet? Hmm? Your co-star. There will be other people in the play. Oh. Um, and she goes, come on, guys! And she, she beckons, and you see once again the tiny pigeon... The tiny crow kid and um, and the little gazelle girl come out. Oh. <laughs> we were gonna we're gonna do such a good play, you guys! Um, so this is my play. I have written it. I hope you like it. Uh don't be too far ahead, there are spoilers. Um I will be narrating today. Usually that's Gigi's job, but um we had some less than stellar reviews last time we uh, did a play. And you <laughs> looked at Gigi because I was just dead behind the eyes and she's just like, The arts is my life. I live and breathe it. Just because I do my art differently doesn't mean it's not valid. Okay, 
Yay! Carry that energy for us. GG. Uh, Imar, are you ready? Yes! I'm so ready! Heroism! Y'all are heroes, right? Because y'all are here for the festival, so that means y'all are automatically heroes, right? That's how this works? Okay. Oh. Um, that was a question, not a statement, but I'm here for your energy, big guy. Okay. Are we all ready? Uh, one second. I want to okay. go over to the gazelle girl and as much as possible make myself small so I'm, you know, he crouches, <laughs> which makes him still very, very tall and very, very big. Yeah, still like a foot above the top of her horns, even. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hey, what's up? Do you like a play? Not really, no. Do you like a cookies? Not really, no. Do Sugar you... is bad for your teeth. Uh, do you like, uh, celery? Let me fill you in, big guy. I don't really like a lot of things. Okay, well, no, what do you level. like? You wouldn't understand, big guy. Okay, well, one when second. When death sleeps, it hears my name whispered. Oh, of course, of course. She clicks herself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one second. And he pulls out this little foot-by-foot -foot box at his side. He opens it. It's like a little white little ice box. He sticks yeah. his hand in way longer than he should be able to, like all the way to his like elbow. And he makes a face like he's fumbling around for something. And he pulls out a tiny lollipop with a yellow smiley face on the tip. And uh, it's wrapped up all nice-nice. If I give you this, will you smile? Yeah, sure. Roll an insight check for me. She's not <laughs> just gonna immediately. smile. <laughs> <laughs> so 15 to decipher her lies. I rolled a 19. Guess we'll never know. <laughs> no, she's totally gonna smile. She's totally gonna smile. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. He hands it over and smiles and says, You're going to do great. Wish I could say the same for you. And I will, because I do believe that. I believe in people at their core. And sucks on the lollipop. Does not smile. Very good. I mean, like, her mouth kind of upturns a little bit while she's sucking on the lollipop, but... I'll, I'll take that's it. A, that's about it. <laughs> All right. Uh, with that, before you, um, Fenny leads you to the wings of... The quote-unquote wings of the quote-unquote stage... Uh, you see it's kind of a few pallet boxes just kind of rested on top of each other and secured somewhat. Um, <laughs> you see um, a, a very stringy pair of curtains kind of covering the front side of the stage. Uh, some seats kind of very conveniently um, and possibly strategically placed around some of the varying food tent tables uh, where people are enjoying their meals. Uh, and on the stage, you see, not even metaphorically so, but actual cardboard trees, um, a very uh, primitively painted uh, backdrop, quote-unquote. <laughs> a lot of quote-unquotes with this uh, stage decoration. Um, it is very endearing. Um, someone has obviously put a lot of effort into it, um, despite the lack of proof. Of that fact. <laughs> um, but uh, Fanny leads you to your positions either side of the, of the stage. Rat, are y'all ready to go? Any last questions, worries, or anything? We're good to go. Just remember to pay and we'll be fine. All right. Good luck, everybody. Break leg. So. Literally? Oh no, it's it uh no, please don't. Uh happened at one of the last shows. It's bad story. Anyway. <laughs> um she kind of clears her throat and manually opens the curtains at the front of the stage. And um <laughs> had to. Had to. Um <laughs> manually opens the curtains at the front of the stage and kind of <clears throat> uh everybody welcome 
to the festival of the hunt. Uh, as ordained by the Prince Wilbur Forenze himself, we would love to present to you the orphan... Oh, I always get it mixed up. The or... The Osprey Orphan Theatric Society. Not... Yeah, that... Yeah. I can see how people get, get confused about that. Um... The orphans today have both written and will star in a play as written by the amazing narrator you are about to see. Um, so, uh, put down your battle axes and g get out your ears and please enjoy the show. Um, and there's kind of like a, a bit of applause, a fair bit of applause, um, and a kind of confused, oh, I'll just... I thought I was just having a pork batch, but I guess there's like a whole... Hey, entertainment! Let's go! Um, kind of general rumblings and curiosity around the crowd. It doesn't seem like anyone specifically came here to watch the show. Um, they just happen to be in the vicinity of it happening. Uh, you see, after this quote-unquote applause... Um, you see Pidge go out on the stage in his little, <laughs> his little spiral decorated vest. Uh, you do see his wings are trembling a little bit as he holds his, uh, narration board. Uh, hello ladies and gentlemen. My name is Pidge. I don't have a surname. We're all orphans. Um, I have pr procured and produced the show... For tonight's entertainment, with my own hand, which is hard because pens are typically not made for wings. Um, I would like to present to you today my play over fallen skies. And he kind of tries to clap himself with his little wings <laughs> and kind of heads over to the narration corner of the stage. Uh, where a couple of magically summoned lights, you see Fanny behind the stage kind of summon some dancing lights above the stage to light and ambientify um, the stage as the day kind of grows darker with the evening drawing in. <coughs> uh, you see... Um, who's playing character two again, sorry? I forgot the name. So we have Aloro. Me. All right, Aloro and Bifon. Uh, you see Imar beckon you as... Uh, he walks out onto the stage with his little cardboard sword and cape, <laughs> which is also cardboard. And he goes, <sighs> Right, let's go! Journeys onto the stage looking all heroic, doing little little dances and, and action movements. Um, do you both follow him on? <laughs> we'll do the same as he does. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Once upon a time, there were some bold and noble adventurers. They were going on an adventure to find a mysterious artifact lost to time and also the skies. The Twig of Destiny. Uh, you see Imar turn to you both with a big swoosh and just, Lo! Whereupon did the Twig go even? I haven't the foggiest. Maybe we should search upon the ground? Ah! A fine plan! Um, you will begin to search on the ground. <laughs> and thus they searched and searched and searched until they no longer could really search anymore. Well, twould seem there's not a branch or even tree here in these parts. Mayhaps we should search the seas? <gasps> a fine plan. Wait a moment. We've not a boat. He gestures his wings out wide um, and kind of tries to cover up the tree that actually is in the background. Uh <laughs> you fool. Hark. Yes, there is. There is a boat just over yonder. Um... You point your arm out um, to a boat that you hope is there, as is in the stage directions. Um, you see Gigi 
the little gazelle girl just standing with her arms out, kind of like a Lego man. Ah, my eyes deceive me. That is indeed a boat. And with that, they traveled onto the boat. And do you follow Imar onto the... <laughs> just kind of? You see, Imar just walks into uh into Gigi's arms. Um, and just kind of stares forward like she's not there, <laughs> even though he's like face to face with her. <laughs> um, do you follow him onto the boat? <laughs> yes. Let us board. Let us board. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and Imar just looks at you and goes, "I love the improvisation." And with that, they travelled into the boat, and once in the boat, travelled to the seas. Gigi begins to walk towards you, so you will kind of have a moment of, oh shit, as we need to turn around and go in the direction of the boat so you don't get pushed aside by these children. And once in the boat, travelled to the seas, and searched, and searched, and searched. It's behind you! <laughs> That doesn't even make sense. Um, anyone who's around, um, you don't need to roll in insight to see that Pidge has been thrown off of his game. Is any would anyone like to do anything to put put Pidge back on his game? Yes. <laughs> what would you like to do? I will throw a radish at the person who yelled. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> roll to hit. Um, <laughs> improvised weapon. <laughs> I have tavern brawler, so I am proficient with improvised weapons. Yes! Thank you for having tavern brawler. <laughs> my favorite. My current favorite. Oh. Uh, an well, 18 to hit. Uh, 18 absolutely hits. <laughs> <laughs> you just see this this half orc guy just like guffawing, <laughs> just out of nowhere, just a, just a rogue <laughs> vegetable just bonk. Oh! And then like you hear like booming from backstage. Shut up! I'm just like a... <laughs> <laughs> Pidge, Pidge might have just Pidge looks very afraid suddenly. Um, so, oh, 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 okay. Uh, and gives you a little wingy thumbs up. <laughs> uh, slightly alarmed. It's like, someone just threw a turnip at me? What the f- uh, uh, And though our adventurers found not the twig, they, they, they did find the lair of an evil monster. The Bunyuflin! <laughs> not only did they steal the twig, but also for sooth, I stole the princess. Oh no, please, me, save me. I think I might die over long for I lost my shoe. What is wrong with the princess? <clears throat> I mean, no, you should shut up for now. I am the evilest one here. Oh no. The heroes arrived just in time to hear the evil Bunyuflin's plans because they steal princesses a lot. They decided to apprehend the mean beastie. Um, adventurers, you see, you see Gigi kind of usher you back on stage with her forklift arms, <laughs> being the boat she was always meant to be. <laughs> My compatriots, we should indeed do the vanquishing of this cruel, evilest one. Hiya! I have a very important question for you, Bifong. Um, are you yeah. actually going for a swing, or are you performing a swing that is not I, a real I, swing? I sort of chopped my hand forward, was what I did. Alright, ro roll a performance check for me. Oh, uh, okay. Um, Watch <laughs> uh, <clears throat> That that would be um a three plus in three. In in <laughs> incredible. That's supposed to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tarquin, um, you you oh, man, they're orphans. you you see a karate chop coming, uh, and yet. It it still it just grazes 
your arm and and uh, causes causes a little ow to slip out um, out of character. Hey, what the? F I mean, <clears throat> <laughs> oh no, I am going to die. <laughs> uh, they fought and fought until they could fight no more. The pitch just kind of walks to the middle, like in front of you on the stage, even though you're both considerably taller than him to try and block the accidental violence that occurred. Uh, they, they could, they fought and fought until they could fight no more, which is now. Um, and also, um, and until, um, when the Bunyoflin was dead. Oh, no, I am so dead. <clears throat> How... How does how does Tarquin perform the death? <laughs> he does a backflip, hits his head on the floor, and dies. <laughs> <laughs> for, for shits and giggles, roll a, roll an acrobatics check at advantage for me, please. <laughs> That's Just, a nine plus two, eleven. It's a, it's a decent backflip. The head bonk is slightly real. It's a little bit too real. It does jar you for a second. Um, That's being a good actor. Exactly. <laughs> um, Yay! Uh, alas! Where is the twig? Um. Uh. Uh. Where, where is the twig? Um. <laughs> you all kind of simultaneously follow Imar's gaze, which goes off stage to the prop table that is off stage that contains uh, the the cardboard branch. Um, if anyone need, what, would like to improvise oh. a branch of destiny, now is the time. <laughs> I I can I uh, <laughs> uh, assume beast form real quick and just cat it up. And make a dart for it, and and get the original prop. <laughs> You're gonna turn into a cat, run, <laughs> run to get the the cardboard branch, and then run back on stage with the cardboard branch. Yes, <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm fucking here for it. Um, you all see it, Alora, turn into a cat. Like, whoa, whoa, uh, friend, you have forsooth. Turned into a beast. Um, you run off stage, grab the branch, come back on stage. What? What are you doing with the branch? <laughs> I'm just gonna politely put it in front of the crow kid. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm. I'm. Picks it up and goes. Thank you for your sacrifice. For I forgot of the curse. Where? Uh, if you are not a magician, and and you touch the branch, then you become a cat forever. Oh, thank you for your sacrifice. Um, Her no, the the twig it is this definitely here and now. Oh, 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 MGs, you saved the twig, and also my life is also here and saved. Thank you so much. You're my hero. And the princess waves. rewarded her favorite hero with a royal gesture. Luto, what what is your royal gesture? He reads that, realizing he has to make one up. And uh waves at the crowd. <laughs> the most royal gesture ever. <laughs> <laughs> Only royals can break the fourth wall. <laughs> and just waving to chat in Twitch. Hi, Twitch chat! <laughs> you see words floating before you. Um. Uh. Oh. The, the royalist of uh, gestures, the royal wave. This is all great and all, but I think we wish we had a boat to help us escape. I don't have one. Oh, it's okay. We brought our own. Gestures to Gigi, who is still just standing on stage like a Lego figure. One of our heroic heroes then decided it was the perfect moment to give a speech to celebrate the occasion of the princess not being dead. 
I I have a very important question for you, Tarquin. Uh, how much would he like to be in the spotlight right now, and and take the heroic speech of the show despite being the villain? <laughs> and the heroic speech for the villain <laughs> Just comes back to life. <laughs> I lied to you all. I am actually the hero. <gasps> oh, oh my goodness! What? Yes, and this was all a lie. See that princess over there waving out at you? She's actually a dragon. <gasps> I the am. Haven't existed for at least like twenty-four years. No, he said. Yeah, that means I am the hero, <laughs> and you should all give me your money so I can save you. Now, oh, please. Uh, for sooth, I did not bring any money, but. Um, you see I Imar's improv in his little butt off. Um, oh, he, d he does okay. <laughs> he, he kind of kneels on one knee and holds his cardboard sword up to you, <laughs> looking down. My father, before he was killed by a cat, not unlike that one over there, and points to Alora. <laughs> He gave me this sword and told me it was worth like a gajillion gold. Would you take this in order for us to all survive this encounter? Is that the sword of destiny? Uh... Yes, yes. Perfect. It is the only... Weapon that can beat the the twig of destiny. No, -uh, the twig of destiny can beat anything and anyone. No, maybe the sword can actually beat the beat everything and every every. And and with that, the world was uh, saved once more for real. Uh, the end. And <laughs> Paige makes a real quick effort to pull the curtains closed. Um, there is some. You know what? Everyone make a performance. A general performance check. We'll roll as a group. <laughs> as a, a theatre troupe. Okay. Okay. Eleven. <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. Eleven as well. Nice, nice. <laughs> Five. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> You're a cat now, to be fair, so... It was... <laughs> it's hard. There's, like, less facial expression. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it is a overall group success, though. So you do hear quite a few people in the crowd like, "That was, that was actually really good. like I loved the, the twist at the end. Like I, I wasn't expecting like she was a dragon the whole time." Yeah, man, that doesn't like that doesn't make any sense. But in like a lot of ways, with the mise en scene, it like totally does. You're you're so right. I for, I forgot you went to theater school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my bard. Like, duh. Um, you, you see kind of one woman in the back just, like, tearing up a bit, like... <sighs> Such a... When he died and then came back to life and just... Oh, brother, brother! Um, you, as the curtains close, um, you see Fene just in the wings, just doing that thing where she very quietly, like, puts her hands together, uh, like in, like in prayer, but just in front of her mouth. Um very quietly having a crisis. Um, her eye was just wide. And, uh, well, um, that was interesting. I, I wish I could say, um, that things didn't go wrong, <laughs> but uh, d did y'all have fun, at least? <sighs> Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. um... That, yeah, uh... I think some of that stuff at the end there wasn't in the script, but, uh... You know, you did you did the job. And, and, you, and you did the job well. So, uh... uh thank you. Um... I've already given you your payment. I'm gonna go and lie down. <laughs> uh, see if we get any 
collections in for, for the cast and the orphans. Uh, yeah. She just kind of very quietly <laughs> walks away, like regretting the entire day. Um, <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, you see, you both, you all see, uh, Imar and, uh, Pidge in the heat of an argument about, um, whether, uh, the stick of destiny or the sword of destiny is the stronger weapon. No, but you don't understand because it's not all about whether something's got an edge. Yeah, but if it's got an edge, then it can cut a branch. But... But no, it's the Twig of Destiny! Yeah, well, it's the Sword of Destiny. Um, they will continue arguing. Uh, unless anyone would like to do anything. But if not, what what would y'all like to do? <laughs> Persuasion. Successfully. Okay, Wait, what would you like to say? Mm -mm. Oh, boy. <laughs> that would be six plus three. Um so as convincingly as I possibly can. You know, it takes both to truly be a hero. Both the twig and the sword. Did combine powers and stuff. They both kind of look at you blankly and uh, uh, Pidge takes both of the cardboard things and then just like looks up at you and just presses them together with his hands. Like this? There you go. <laughs> That's perfect. But, but then it can't function as either. No, because it functions as both. I don't, I don't think I get it. No, no, no. Just don't, don't think about it, bitch. It, it makes sense. You just gotta, you gotta dead brain it. <laughs> okay. Oh, mm. I'll try. What well, are you? How, how do? You, but, but, um, the Twig of well, Destiny like, isn't real. I, I made it up. It, it is if you believe in it. Oh, so, I believe. You do? Yeah. You see his little face just kind of, <laughs> like a pigeon cocking their head at a piece of bread, just looks at the, <laughs> looks at the cardboard <laughs> in his hands. <laughs> Contemplating the world. I suppose I suppose you're right. Does that mean if I believe in me, that I can do anything? Absolutely. Ah. Oh. Cool. Thanks, Mister. What's your name? Um, Bifon. Thestos. Bless you. What was your name? Bifon. I didn't hear it because you sneezed. Bless you. I'm gonna go now. You <laughs> two uh, play nice. Okay. I believe we can play nice. That, that's I, the spirit. I, I, I will try. But, you know, sometimes believing's hard, but if, like, you start believing, then maybe things become easier. I feel like I said something really clever just now, but I'm not gonna remember it. Yeah, that happens a lot. Okay, well, um, thank you all for doing my show and then also changing it completely at the end. <laughs> it was really, it was really funny. Um, not that it's a comedy, it's a, it's a serious, uh, th thrilling drama, but, um... It, it was it was good it was good i i had a good time um if you want to join the troop forever um you can by the way um but you you, you don't have to well, you're probably really busy if we have time feel free to give us a call <sighs> okay i'll just i'll just come outside and go be fun! <laughs> like that? I'll say bless you. Nice. I don't get it. <laughs> okay, mind. well, uh, it's my bedtime now, so, um, thank you all so much. 
And he goes to in to hug all of your legs one by one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, slightly more wary of Tarquin just because he played the villain and he can't quite uh, establish reality in his head. <laughs> Who's the good guy? Well, um, well yeah, but uh, I believe that he was the bad guy, so I, I don't want to believe... Are you, are, you, are you a bad guy, mister? I am a hero. Roll a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, persuasion check. Got a 10 to beat. That's a 6. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Pitch just kind of... He, he goes for your leg and then just like... Hmm. I'm going to not if that's okay. I don't, I don't want you to... I know the Twig of Destiny is not real, but I still put a lot of effort into my cardboard and I don't want you to steal it. It's all right, little one. Go to sleep. Uh, okay. Why, do you want me to go to sleep so you can kill me in my sleep? And I was like, okay, bitch, we'll get you, uh, we'll get you some nappy naps, okay? <laughs> uh, thanks, you guys. I appreciate it. And hey, if you're ever in Osprey, just find a tree and tap on it and we'll be there, all right? Because we're actually heroes. I don't know if you knew that, but uh, this ain't a play for me. This is life. Wow. Yeah. And a rough life you lead. I mean, yeah, our parents are dead. It's, that's pretty fucking bad, if you ask me. That is indeed mad. <laughs> yeah. And and Oro gets <coughs> just like slinks away, feeling very awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Looks to Ludo. Like your bird. I'm a bird myself, you know. Uh, one second, let me see. I pull out friends, and I whisper, "Do you like? Do you like this boy?" <coughs> oh, he likes you too. Look, look, look. <laughs> he just kind of bird screams in his face. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, okay. That's a cool bird. You know what would be better though? What? As if it was a free bird. And he just gives you a two finger salute and backs away. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Alright. <laughs> but you cannot change. <laughs> so <laughs> oh. as <laughs> as um you finish off the play, taking off your um various adornments of cardboard uh costumes. Uh, you look across, uh, back across, at the at the field of adventurers, kind of, as the night draws in now, um, many of the tents uh, kind of lit up with campfires and chatter and magic and people training and sparring, uh, ready for the next day's events. Uh, as you look around, um, ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, yeah, you see groups of the groups of bards still just kind of having a guitar circle, or a lute circle, <laughs> an instrument circle. Um, yeah, you see different groups sparring. Uh, where is my thing? Okay. Um, Allura, roll a perception check for me at advantage because blessed. Hashtag blessed. <laughs> Hashtag blessed, sis. <laughs> Hashtag blessed. Where is the panther? Ooh. The panther disappears after an hour, so I'm assuming that the panther is gone. Alas. <laughs> left, left the panther as the, as the one willing uh, participant of the audience of the play. And then as you finished, <laughs> it, it just kind of closed its eyes in a nod. <laughs> and just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> became became particles on the wind. <laughs> there was just some dwarf sitting next to it this whole entire time, shivering. <laughs> I got an eighteen. Ooh. Ooh. 
beast. Okay. Um, your your kitty cat senses tingle, if you, uh, for lack of a better <laughs> magical <laughs> phrase. Um, as as the kind of group is discussing their recent theatrical debut, um, phenomenal, uh, by their own say so, <laughs> um, and by a few members of the audience. Uh, you feel a strange, just the very hairs on the back of your neck just prick a little bit. Not quite from the cool kind of night wind approaching, um, but more so from some other sense. A familiar sense, but a strange one to you nonetheless. Um, as you kind of try to focus on the feeling kind of close your eyes for a second you see um, the shrine that you were at earlier today, the shrine of searching kind of just wash over your closed eyelids what would you like to do? still in kitty form um I think I'm gonna make a go for the shrine. Okay, are you gonna uh, meow and alert to your other <laughs> your companions? I'm just, gonna, just gonna, gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk around in a circle, meow very much like I haven't gotten my food yet, <laughs> kind of like meows. Everybody just right make now. a big show of I am doing a thing. I am doing a thing. I am doing a thing. <laughs> and then <laughs> just start start heading. Beef on Muto Tarquin, please roll an animal handling check for me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand the kitty kit? <laughs> 16 plus 3. Ooh, 19. Nice, nice. 22. Ooh. You guys are in tune. Let's go. <laughs> How we doing, Beef on? What did get? Hmm? What did get for oh, animal handling? Oh, it's 16 plus 3. Yeah. Oh yes, sorry, my bad. Who didn't? Who's didn't I hear? Everybody. Oh, uh, um, I got an eight. Eight. Okay. Uh, kitty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a kitty cat. Cute kitty cat. Meow. Um, you're kind of trying to pay attention to what the cat's doing, and you just hear. <laughs> 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 just in your ear, <laughs> from uh, friends. <laughs> oh my god. No one told me life was going to be this way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <sighs> My life's a joke. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <Good job. laughs> How's your love life? <laughs> oh, it's like... It's like my favorite video game on the PS2, DOA. <laughs> 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 um, you... Um, you all see um, the cat. Uh, Beef on Tarquin, you see that this cat is trying to alert you to something. Yeah, I think this as cat is trying, trying to, to alert us to something. <laughs> as if, as if a Loro cat is trying to lead you somewhere. This this cat Perhaps is we still. Follow. This is still Al, right? That's Al. Are you Al? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Follow you? <laughs> shrugs at everybody else. Puts puts friends on his head and starts walking. Um, yes, you... we follow the cat. Follow. Uh, Finny might Laura. be trapped in a well. <laughs> <laughs> Alora, are you heading to the shrine? <laughs> I'm heading to the shrine where the vision came from. Yes. Wonderful. Um, as you walk, weave your way through the tents uh, and back towards the shrine, you do hear the odd comment of, Man, they've got a cat as well now? I thought the seagull was fucking weird enough. Um, <laughs> 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 Anyone who can see uh, friends perched atop Ludo would see him kind of occasionally just kind of owl necking people and just kind of watching them <laughs> with, turning their head perfectly still as uh, they survey the area 
And you all follow uh, Aluro Cat to the shrine, which is now um, significantly quieter. Um, there's only a few kind of candles lit inside. Um, and it is it is pretty peaceful and quiet, and you don't see anyone else here. What would you like to do? What is it, Al? Why you bring us here, why? I uh, shift out of wild shape. And I start pacing. I don't... I just got this feeling back there that something wrong had happened here. Um, I got a vision of some kind. Roll for me either an arcana check, an investigation check, or a perception check. And this, um, it's not quite so much about uh, which you roll being your strength, it's more about what you will find out by doing each of them. So an investigation oh, check okay. will be more like searching for something, a perception check will be something on the surface, arcana check is more magical vibes. <laughs> with that specific then voice. ignore <laughs> ignore what i just did okay. i'm gonna go for <laughs> arcana information sweet dang only a six okay um you feel from kind of the other side of this shrine it's not a particularly difficult role uh you feel quite a powerful kind of pulse of the arcane um yeah you've you felt strong magics before like when you first discovered um the cat shrine uh you felt strong magic when your powers first kind of came to be and to manifest and this is a similar feeling but while those were quite surface and kind of tingled the hairs on your arms and resonated in your heart this is something deeper this is like a bassy reverberation of your arcanic knowledge and senses there's something happening here within the magic everyone does anyone else, else also... feel it Sorry. Yeah, everyone else is also welcome to roll an arcana check now. Whoa. Okay. Uh, nine. Okay. Fourteen. Okay. Nope. <laughs> what did you get? Oh, I didn't even... <laughs> okay. I just... <laughs> literally don't know. Oh, fifteen. There you go. Ooh. Okay. So... Those of you with the 14 or higher, um, you kind of, well, you all sense this kind of magical influx that happens, whether, even if you're not a magic caster, you still feel like the hairs prick on your arms and some, something, some shift, some occurrence happening. Um, for those who are older 15 and above, or 14 and above, you feel a distinct... You, s you feel the same distinct shift, some form of... kind of... Where you're used to your heartbeat and the kind of strength of it and you kind of close your ears off and hear the, the rhythm of it, it feels as if the rhythm of the arcane pool that a magician or a mage or anyone with any kind of magical inclination um, is off. The the beat is slightly out of time. Um, who got who got the fifteen or who got the highest? Ludo. Ludo, nice, nice. Um, I have lost the page. <laughs> uh, that is why I ask. Uh, okay. 
So Ludo, you, for just a second, alongside your blessing from this very shrine earlier, you see just a sliver of some almost mirror-like aurora, like tiny aurora in the sky, um, just ahead of you, kind of at eye level, um, just peeking out from behind the other side of the shrine. Do you Did see you that? See, it? see what? Uh, he's over there. Here, here, here. And he starts trotting after it. Yeah. Do you all follow? Yeah. I follow. As you all approach with your blessed perceptions, hashtag bless, um, you all begin to see this kind of slightly more open area just at the edge of um, this aisle, this smaller conjoined aisle. Uh, still a good couple of feet before the actual edge, but close enough to be slightly cautious. And you see what looks like a very transparent, translucent, metallic, almost mirror-like veil. Almost um, like a piece, like a sheet floating in the breeze when it's pegged out on the line to dry. It almost seems physical, but it reflects whatever is behind it. So it's as if in this three-dimensional space, there is this gently waving two-dimensional force or rift ahead of you. Very safe to say none of you have seen anything like this before. Hello. I'm going to reach out and touch it. Okay. Roll for me a wisdom saving throw, please. 19. Oh, hell nice. yeah. Nice. Um, very, very nice. Uh, <laughs> you kind of reach your hand towards it, and just as like the very tip of your finger touches it, you feel this unrivaled pinpoint force. As you've seen with fighting, if you... Um, you can have a punch that starts very close to someone and with a very small surface area, but with enough swift movement, it can do an incredible amount of damage. And you're kind of experiencing the arcane version of that. Um, but thankfully, your wits kick in and you're able to move your hand before you feel the most of the damage um, occur from it. Uh, the rest of you see this kind of spark of electricity almost as um, Bifon Lee uh, points his hand and touches it. And you see just for a second where the veil is still waving slightly, it begins to settle back into place. Um, but as it does, you see these little tiny channels of bright glowing light arc out from the central point that Bifon touched. Just little lightning strikes arcing out like electrified wood. But then it vanishes and resumes to normal reality. But you all see it. It's still there or it disappeared? It disappeared. I'll, like, wave my hand where it was and kind of step into that area. Nothing there. What? How's that for a field trip? I need a drink. What um, was that? From behind you, you just hear 
a clattering of all sorts of things, books, metal, metallic sounds, just... <laughs> um, do you turn around? Yes. I'm going to see... dodge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, roll a dexterity saving throw, I guess, or a dexterity... Either dexterity or dexterity saving. 18. Is um, yeah, you successfully uh, dodge nothing. Um, Sweet. I guess a book almost nice. lands by your foot and you just, whoop, <laughs> no book on my foot. <laughs> um, and uh, you see behind you the man from earlier, uh, Tim, as he uh, doesn't like to be called, Tufima. Um, and he looks at you all like you've all just witnessed a, a murder happen. <laughs> um, well, I'm picking myself up off the ground currently. Was what? What was that? His eyes I'm... are wide. What was what? You saw you saw it, right? The non-dimensional magical. Uh, yes, the non-dimensional magic thing. What else would I be referencing? I don't know. There's a lot of things that have happened today. Mm. Indeed, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to raise my voice. Did it? Why are you all here? I uh had a vision that something was going wrong here and so we showed up and then there was the crazy non-dimensional magic thingy he kind of puts one arm around his uh dia kind of around his diaphragm and middle and one on his brow just trying to process what you've just said so you just very casually had a vision about Whatever that was just now. A feeling, a vision, whatever you want to call it. Right. I don't uh, know how any of this works. I'm just here. No, <laughs> no. Um, that, that's, that's great. Um, <laughs> yeah, he passes out. He faints. <laughs> um, he is out for the count. What, what happened? Okay, uh, he just he he was shocked at what? Presumably, he saw the thing too. Yes. Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah. And with that, we will call it a night. <gasps> Dang. Dun dun dun. <laughs> what is happening? Anyone want to bet if he's still alive or dead? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> oh my giddy goodness, you guys. Thank you, you so much. Amazing, that was such amazing. a good first session. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you know, there was a lot of faffing, but we did get to one of the two things. So that's good. <laughs> that wasn't both things? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, wow. I thought the tavern was one thing and the play was nope. the other thing. <laughs> nope. <laughs> the play the play was one of the things. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, yeah. I totally ruined that play and it was awesome. No, it was incredible. <laughs> it was in absolutely incredible. Um, no, it's it's one of my favorite things uh, I've ever done. Um, I'm glad you picked the villain. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that went very well. Yes, that went incredibly well. I was like, especially because he's the villain, and then it's like someone needs to do a speech, and it's like, well, there's only one man for the job. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I may be dead, but like someone has to give a speech. Um, I realized it was either going to be that or a Laura just meowing, um, and I was here for it either way. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the the play. Um, we had Monty in here earlier, I saw, as well as Jest, um, my original D&D &D group. Uh, we almost started a campaign in the same world. Um, and uh, I did a play with them, and I couldn't find the original script, unfortunately, to do it with you guys. Uh, so I was like, I'll just write another one, it's fine. Um, <laughs> and I've never laughed so much in a D&D &D session before. Um, it went just as wrong the first time, if not... Uh, it went, it went more wrong in a different way. 
because uh, one of the characters decided to roar uh, to be an intimidating bad guy, and but then the kids actually got scared and started <laughs> crying. <laughs> and, it was, and one of the other characters um, didn't, there wasn't another role spare, but he wanted to be the wind uh, because there was already someone playing the trees. Um, and so he just stood on, on stage with a feather the entire time. And it was absolutely one of my favorite sessions of all time. So I was like, I have to bring back the play. I have to bring back the play. <laughs> but no, y'all did. That was fun. Superbly. And we have friends now. <laughs> we are friends and we have friends. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, very, very eponymous namesake, uh, ominous ending to the to the session was a very ominous namesake end to this. It was stupid though, because I forgot. That was like the one thing I didn't fully plan earlier. And in my notes, it literally just says, Nye Cat. <laughs> ending my cat <laughs> I was like shit I forgot to write anything else <laughs> so that's, that's my DMing style in, in, a, in a pinch is just writes an entire play from the perspective of a child who is a pigeon who writes an entire play about a twig and <laughs> it's <laughs> it was so cute oh my gosh I loved it uh, yay Yes, and you guys did so good. I'm so excited for this group dynamic. It's truly, truly amazing. Yeah, really digging the group, really digging you guys' characters. Yes. Yes. I'm already adopted something. Already. Already. <laughs> it took like 2.5 seconds. <laughs> yeah, really, it's like we started Very playing first. and we already have animals everywhere. <laughs> All right, just 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 a little bit of a public service announcement. You got this one, okay? You got the bird, but there's gonna be other things, and he is going to eat them. That is the whole thing Ludo is about. He is all about cooking monsters and eating monsters. Sure, surely, surely not. The bear will. I mean, the the seagull will forever be your your one. Okay, you get one <laughs> from here on out. Though, <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna be good. Meet we're gonna meet something really cute and you've kind of like gotta decide chat you got you can only have one yeah we trade in the bird <laughs> they battle for the death and it's like the other one's just a baby I owl bear i can only make so many hats <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a lie that's a lie i endorse the making of all the hats <laughs> okay there's only but so many umbrellas back at the bar okay that's fair that's fair yeah, add add seven cocktail um umbrellas. To your just gonna have a pocket full of them, just yep. so he doesn't cook anything. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, but that one's so cute. Oh god, I'm out of umbrellas. Put a hat on it. Put a hat on it. <laughs> <laughs> Saving the world one hat at a time. I don't. Um, I don't think anymore that the hat is a clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Owen was like was about to be like. Well, you know, if someone's naked but they have a hat on, they're still kind of fucking naked. <laughs> but he got real deep into the philosophy of it. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yes, and that's not even that's not even the two things. That's only the one. <gasps> and we got to it right at the end, which I was not surprised by in the slightest. So I guess next time, you know, we're going to see what's going on with uh, the, ve the veil of magic. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> no clues for that anywhere on the uh, on the visuals or the title. And, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look, I was like, it could either be something that foreshadows a bit too much into the future, or it can be something real, real session, <laughs> first session. <laughs> um, but yes, next time we go on the hunt. Ooh. Exciting. Yay. Ooh. Ooh, and then Ludo's going to eat it unless someone puts a hat on it. I'm, I'm eating everything from here on out. Just heads up. <laughs> yes, everybody. Some, somebody remember, we need to ask if when we catch it, can we eat it afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ikta didn't say anything about not eating it after. Just ah. uh, apprehend it if possible uh, without uh, killing it. But if it we have dies. to turn it in first, Ludo. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to turn in all of it. Then we can eat it. <laughs> you can yeah. turn it in most of it. It's like amazing. Did you hunt? Did you hunt the monster? And Ludo just brings out a fucking a biryani. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my.
my god, amazing. But yes, G big GG's, thank you all for playing and and um embracing chaos with me and creating so much fucking chaos for yourselves as well. A bit about <laughs> Um <laughs> Thank you, chat, so much for coming. Um We'll definitely be carrying on with this Wednesdays, I think. This is this is a thing. This is our thing. This is our this Wednesday is a thing. thing. So, um, Yes, and be sure, because here's, here's the thing, you guys. We all exist outside of this show. Yes. Uh, oh, my gosh. So you can go and support I'm real? our lovely... <laughs> if you believe you're real, then you are Oh, that's true. Shit, yeah, I said you that. told me that. <laughs> um... <laughs> Um, but yes, you can go and support the lovely players um, outside of the project. Twy's been pumping out, pumping out them shoutouts like an absolute beast. Um, and put a hat on her <laughs> so she doesn't get eaten. Um, very, very much appreciate all the support and the love. Um, as posted, you can check out more of the world of um, the tale, the tale, tales of the Tournville. I've got to remember the name now. <laughs> Start remembering the name. Tot um, TV. Tot TV, yeah. If you're from the UK, it's not Rosie and Jim, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I think it was a thing in Canada as well, I'm not sure. But um, yes, yeah, so you can find out more about um, everyone. Go and check out their streams and their YouTubes. We got Darren over on YouTube doing the ASMR stuffs. We got Nye doing the awesome audio stuffs. And then you can check out Time on Twitch and you can check out jc bloody every uh, jc's just everywhere it's omni omni omnipotent oh, this is a struggle my brain gave out a while ago i'm, I'm not sure how i'm so good <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much ty and check and yes, out key check they're amazing check out ah, key they do everything they stream so they do key. everything they're so amazing and you hear all the voices today that's all key i i'm i am your best boyfriends <laughs> i am your friends <laughs> <laughs> It's an honor. Um, and yes, please do go check us all out and support and send love. Um, we are we all about community and happiness and fun times and support. And you know, be be the be the be the friends <laughs> that you want from the world. And yeah, has anyone got any any last words once more? <laughs> need to uh, find a different phrase for that. A uh, big thank you to Missy Bree for subscribing, saying, oh my god, yeah. more VA D&D. &D. Yes! I'm sadly about to go back to work and already missed the last three hours, but this brings me so much joy. That actually brings up something Yay. a lot of people were asking if there's going to be VODs. I know normally I don't keep VODs. For this, there will be VODs. So hey. I'll also be uploading them to YouTube, so keep an eye out for that. <gasps> uh, Ooh. YouTube? We're making the big leagues, mama. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, thank you all so much for supporting all of us, supporting this little bubble of fantasy times. And yeah, you can you can get involved. You're being involved right now. You know, like we we appreciate you. We know it's uh, D and D uh, sessions aren't the most sociable for a chat because you're just kind of yelling into the void. <laughs> oh, uh, actually, uh, Twilight had a great idea for that. They said next time. <gasps> Uh, hop on the and then JC said uh, Discord server. We're gonna have a channel and a text ch a text channel, so y'all can oh hang out God. and talk about what's going on. Ask any questions you all want. We'll monitor it while we while we're gaming. Yeah. It's another way for all y'all who are watching to uh, you know keep in contact with each other and uh, watch it through a little group watch thing. There you go. Ooh. Dang. We got we got everything. We got seagulls. We got Discord <laughs> live chats. <laughs> We got, we got, we got cat people. We got just suddenly Panthers. left, suddenly panther. That was great. I, I looked at the chart. I was like, what animal? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was great fun. Yeah. There's a, there's an entire magic item in D and D called a bag of tricks. And you just throw out like a piece of fluff and it becomes an animal for an hour. And I was like, what? That's so cool. What if it was all cats? <laughs> <laughs> and just went to that. I was like, here you go. <laughs> Take this. Best magical item ever. <laughs> um, yes, but I guess we'll see more of everyone's magical items. 
next Wednesday, same time, same place. Look at this four hours. That's the most punctual I've ever been for something that is D and D related. <laughs> um, but yes, go check everybody out. Look after yourselves. Um, share the love. Share the support. We love you having been here and and seeing y'all get hype makes us so happy. Mm -hmm. My goodness, so happy. Um, and yeah. Every, I guess everybody everybody say bye I don't know. <laughs> like what are your last words chat <laughs> what are your last words we're ending <laughs> no thank you guys for coming along thank you players for playing so good I can't wait to see more of your characters thank and... you chat thanks chat thank you. Mods. Ma, ma, ma. see you later and... bye bye see you later bye 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 <laughs>